Show, episode number 154. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Good to be back, Norman. Hey, Dan, how are you, man? I've been better, but I'm okay. Cool, 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 cool. Also joining us is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. Hello, Ro. How are you doing, man? I am doing great. I have done the 50 fists challenge. What's that? I drew 50 fists. Ah, so very star revolution, huh? <laughs> no, it's more like Georgia's adventure. Okay, okay. Fifty fists on an entire canvas. Ooh. Majestic. It's like a rain of fists going down into someone's face. It's beautiful. Sounds like a revolution. Indeed. <laughs> also joining us today is the Cord. Hi. <laughs> Hello, the Cord. <laughs> Shortest entrance ever. Hello. <laughs> well, it seems okay. I remember I derp on that one, calling you the cord, and somehow it sticked. How? I've embraced it. It's awesome. I am the cord. Uh, true, 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 true. The cord is awesome. Uh, but, you know, I, I believe that our next guy here is even more awesome. And, and in this corner... <laughs> Kick us, King. <laughs> Bring it on, I'll take you on any day. <laughs> hey, how are you doing, guys? Uh, it's nice to be back so so quickly as well. I've, I've warned you last time, you'll regret offering me another spot. We'll see, we'll see. I've done much more stupid things. <laughs> yeah, you got me on the show. Oh, God, don't remind me. So anyway, <laughs> Dan, noticing something new? Yeah, lots of people in the studio now. Yeah, well, that and also webcams. We're trying to do this constantly. Webcams are on. Oh, well, webcam. Let me put a shirt on. One moment. Oh God, no, we don't. Ah. <laughs> so now we see people through video. How do we do this through third world internet? I don't know. I'm just doing it. <laughs> if it crashes, burns. It crashes, burns. So anyway, this week's guest is a guy who handles a lot of cons, and he's also one of the few bronies that I know that handles con in Southeast Asia, and that's you, then. Yep, that's me. That's that's part of the reason why I've been off the show for so long, handling conventions over here. I'm not um, I'm not Chef Sandy. I can't be all in two places at once. Well, I I have no comment on that one because I got no idea how Chef Sandy does it. But yeah, neither do I. That's why I'm saying it. Yeah, but you know, I'm a bit conf- I I won't say confused, but I'm impressed that you can manage a con in Singapore and also a con in. Uh, Malaysia. So, how do you do it, my friend? Let me put it this way: that um, starting in Singapore is um, is a step that I took in order to try to get experience because a, con- a convention is no joke. So I knew it, leading it is going to be a very big task to handle. Hmm. And um, I mean, it's part of it's part of a dream I had. I really wanted to have a convention of my own in in Malaysia, but it was quite difficult to get it off the ground. I mean, they're not easy at all. You need a lot of money, you need commitment. So when the opportunity opened to help out at a convention in the region, I decided to get on it to at least see what it was like inside of it. So that's why I uh, hopped on board Cantalot University at first to see how they did it. And um, I wouldn't say it went terribly well. I wouldn't say it was a disaster either. It was a decent convention. I know in the previous uh, time I was on the show talking about Cantalot U, I was full of praises for it. But um how do you say, there were a lot of things that could be improved upon Cantalot University as a first-year convention. And that's why we grew to learn from it. And uh, much later in the year, uh, I was given another opportunity because someone else was uh, deciding to fund another convention called the Klaus Deal Splash in December. Mm-hmm. And uh, he asked me if I would like to help him organize. And I said, you know, two conventions in a year, two chances to gain opportunity. Opportunity seldom strikes twice, so... Why don't I try this one out as well? And it didn't go as well as Cantlow University, I have to say that. The turnout was pretty disappointing, but what it was great about is whoever came had a lot of fun. All right, good. Keep the rest for later because since you've not been here for a while now, four important questions. Oh boy, yep. this is going to be fun. Yep. We will judge you based on your answers. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> this will be on the quiz. <laughs> am, am, am I not on the quiz already? So then. First question is, favourite character? Favourite character, favourite character, long-standing champion since, before I even watched the show, Pinky Pie. Pinky? Uh, no, no other pony ever comes. Well, a lot of them come close, okay, fine, but she signs, she stands out among the rest. 
All right, so the pinky, the pink one mm-hmm. wins. All right, all right, all right. Pink one mm-hmm. always wins. I mean, I like surprise as well, but surprise ain't in the show. <laughs> she's in comic book canon, but she's on the show. <laughs> okay. She's also in the playing card canon, the CCG canon. Mm-hmm. It's coming soon. Wow. I need to double check that one. Haven't seen it yet. I have the card. Really now? Yeah, I do. Wow, jelly. So anyway, um, favorite episode. Favorite episode. Oh my god. I almost feel like I'm not qualified to answer this because I have not watched Rainbow Rocks. But um, hmm. what Ooh, the hell is my favorite episode? We're writing that down. Just writing that down. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Continue, my... continue. Yes, it's a uh, where's more to be in the interview. My I, my previous answer was Double Rainbow, but that also doesn't really qualify because it's not a canon episode. I will have to fall back upon a friend indeed. A friend indeed. Uh, that's the Frankie Doodle Donkey. Oh yeah, the smile song. That's the one with one. the. That's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that 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 episode. Yeah, I, you know, a lot of people ask me why it's not Pinky Pride. I say Pinky Pride falls short in only one tiny detail, and that's the use of live action footage. And it, anything, everything else about Pinky Pride is awesome. It just fell short with that. That um, uh, sorry, a friend indeed did not. A friend indeed is still a good episode. A friend oh, yes. is still a good episode. It's where the smile song's from? Yeah. Yep, yep. So, how did you become a fan of the show? You really want to hear this again? <laughs> yeah, make it short. Make it short. All right, concise thing. Um, it's not my first fandom. I used to be a fan of the Care Bears. <laughs> All right. <gasps> good philanthropic creatures walk around spreading love and joy. And then that show ended because of capitalism. <laughs> and so uh, I had to look for a new show where um, these characters have a symbol somewhere on their body that represents who they are. And I um, happened to come across... Another show, the except they weren't bears. <laughs> no, the Teletubbies have television sets, you know. They have, they have an idiot box on their tummy. That's not what I'm looking for. You obviously haven't been looking at that head, coming back, you know. I'm sorry? Oh, the Teletubbies are on their way back. Yeah, yeah but they're still going to have a television on their tummy. So I, I, I saw this and I saw, wait, wait, why do these ponies have different things on their... That's not a word. Oh, God, we're really going so to So you're saying the plot brought you into the show, is that correct? Yeah, uh, What's it? Partially that, and uh, my favorite color has always been pink. So I go inside there, and people ask me where did I get my my online handle from, which was Saint Pinky, and it's been Saint Pinky since way before my brony days. And I saw, wait a minute, they named a pony after me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, fine, they so, didn't, but still, <laughs> I'm important. So what? So what I'm getting from this? What brought him into the fandom was the pink plot. Okay, <laughs> writing this down, noting that down. Yes, yes, continue. No, 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 wrong. It's the plot of the pink one. <laughs> because I'm also just... a balloon decorator myself. Oh, okay. So that kind of that kind of sealed the deal. It's like a pink pony who likes balloons, who is in a show full of cute, nice things, and ponies doing philanthropic things. So, yeah, this sounds like where I'm gonna go. And somehow I went down that rabbit hole, and it still seems like I'm going down. <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right. Or going That's up. That's a great way to describe the fandom. <laughs> I've, I've got into it, and I'm still going down. <laughs> yeah, still going into it. Uh, okay. Instead of the rabbit hole, you're going down the diamond dog hole. You're just oh, God. Back. <laughs> yep. Um, Everybody, it's a nice ride. It's not like a diamond dog hole. It's like one of those water park slides that you're going, <laughs> It's been a lovely ride all the way. Well, I'm going to say it's 50 fish challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Last question then. Um, family and friends, what do they think? Family uh, used to think I was nuts. <laughs> all right. So my folks asked me, why are you going to Singapore? Oh, because I'm doing a convention there. What convention are you doing in Singapore? Why can't you do the convention here in KL? It's something to do with the TV show I watch. And that gives it away because I only watch one TV show. <laughs> Breaking right. Bad doesn't count because I watched it during the hiatus. <laughs> so the, my, my folks are supportive in a sense that it's uh, that I'm doing something with it and not just watching TV. I'm actually having, um, you know, putting it into my life and... Um, I uh, even to do with my music and stuff like that. As for friends, I've gotten some that have said that you know, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm like, um, what the hell's wrong with you? You know, I'm not the one who's watching uh, adult content on my laptop. You know, people should be proud of me. Like wrestling. Yes, we're talking about wrestling. Totally about wrestling. Yes, nothing, nothing else. <laughs> can't be anything else. Yep, yep. No, can't, be, can't be anything else. You know, it's like this. You know, have you seen the ponies wrestle? It's so awesome. <laughs> Fun, funny thing that you mentioned that uh, there's a friend forever that's going to feature that and it's Shirley's sister. Shirley has a sis. Good lord. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Is it Barry, Barry Punch uh, Shirley's sister by any I, I don't know. I don't know. But she's a wrestler. Oh, wait. Uh, that's in Tumblr canon though. Oh, God, no. Is it? I just thought it was the canon. <laughs> but anywho, 
Thanks for answering the four important questions, Dan. And I got no idea where to go from here because this episode is also special because it's coming out on the Tuesday and stuff. And it's also special because it's the third year anniversary episode. That's why most of the people are here. They're here because they're awesome and because they want to help me do awesome things. King wanted yes, to be on again. Yes, we do. Yeah. King wanted to be on here again because oh, also it's his birthday. So the show hey, and uh, the show and him share the not today. Same on the day this episode comes out, it will be. Which is funny. No, 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 no. I just, it's, I just... it's on the twenty fifth. Uh, the show and King share the same birthday, so it's destiny. Wow! Excellent. Yeah. yeah. So I would say that destiny is destiny. Okay. Uh, I'm not responding to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm... <laughs> No, you kind of pe- lost me on that one. People who played Final <laughs> Fantasy XIII would know, but Court oh. knows it for another reason. <laughs> I'm trying to convince my folks to buy an Xbox One, so yeah. Oh, God. Court, <laughs> I'm <laughs> glad you're Court, I'm glad you're here. Tell <laughs> them the reason why not to. I <laughs> got <Peter. laughs> uh, Like I said last time, Xbox One, yeah, fine, buy that. Just don't get Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've, my life has gone to that game. <laughs> okay, um, fine. Not the little <laughs> game of Skyrim can fix. We need season five to help you, Court. We need season five to help you to get out of the. You know what you <laughs> do? We can go and get you an iPad and let you play that MLP game log game. Oh God, no! <laughs> I've got that game on my phone, but it 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 makes it so hot that it starts to melt metal. So. <laughs> <laughs> really play that it. Could mis- that could be misinterpreted, you know. Uh, but Especially if my phone's made out of plastic. <laughs> Is yours the Galaxy Note or something? Uh, S4. Okay, yeah, the S4 does get pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Feeling hot, hot, hot. So, anywho. Let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And like I said before, we have you, Dan. So, Dan, um, I don't think we gave you a proper introduction from the very beginning. So, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Um, okay. For those of you who know me, hi. For those of you who don't know me, if you know the Cloudsdale Splash, Cantalot University, or the Friendship Express, I was involved in those. I was talking on the stage quite a bit of those. You would have heard my voice sometime before. If you are listening to this episode and wondering who the hell is talking, yep, it's it's me again. And, um, well, I am Daniel St. Pinky Anthony. I uh, grew up in Malaysia. What else? Um, okay. I've already given my brony story. So currently, I I used to be a host on the MBS show. I'm still helping out with making sure that uh, the show talks to iTunes and gets the episodes up. And um, currently, right now, I am uh, chairing the Friendship Express, which is the upcoming um, pony convention in Kuala Lumpur, happening 21st to 22nd March here in Petaling Jaya, in a place called SS2 Mall. Yeah, it's in a mall. It's in the center atrium of the mall. Lots of space to run around, lots of space to make noise. So we hope to see you there. Awesome, awesome. You said before that you always dreamt of doing a con and making... How do I put this? Doing a con and making it one of your dreams, right? Yeah. So how does it feel? Like almost getting it there, like almost... I, I wouldn't say that it's in a it's in a, it's in that phase of almost getting it there because as far as I'm concerned as as long as it hasn't happened you can't really rest and ask yourself how you're feeling because it's 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 an ongoing process every day in the moment I wake up the moment I go to sleep it's basically either I'm at my day job I'm trying to figure out how to cook without burning the house down or stuck in a traffic jam and any time that's idle is I'm always having to do something with this convention. I have to think about what's my next move, what is the next, uh, what is left to do. I've got to-do lists all over the place, uh, trying to organize all the remaining details for the stuff that we have. So I wouldn't say that you know I'm close to achieving it. It's we're on the way, but I wouldn't like to say give an answer to saying like, oh, I, it feels great because you know. It's it's not it hasn't reached that point where I can step back and say, Hey, wow, this is something admirable yet. All right, all right. So basically you're, what you're saying is it's almost there, it's almost in your grasp, but if it's when you're not on stage talking to the people, it's not done yet, right? I wouldn't say um if till till the moment we say that thank you for coming and that's the moment we can breathe a sigh of relief and look back and see, Wow, this is actually it, we did it, you know. 
Awesome, awesome. Because from the time, I mean, not to curse anything, but from the time between this interview and the date of the convention, one, one thing we have to bear in mind is anything can happen. Mm. Which is which is things that have come in the way. Cantalot University, some of you might know, went through a very turbulent struggle to to be organized. It went through a major change in management, and these things you don't you don't predict that somewhere is going to have a forget forget my language. You're going to that's not a word that bad. So you you don't know what's going to happen somewhere in the middle of the road. So it, it's good. To, it's it's very important to keep an open mindset and prepare yourself for virtually anything because anything can happen. I mean, I appreciate the question, but I would say that I'm not in a position to answer it just yet. All right, cool, cool. I mean, I do understand what you're saying, and I can understand what you're going through. And mm-hmm. it's to me doing something like even okay. I think I mentioned to you that I've photographed for a friend's convention. Ah, like yes. That. Yeah. Back and, in your in your state, correct? Yeah, yeah. So when I was at an enemy convention and stuff. When I was there doing the whole thing, while I was taking the pictures and whatnot, I I didn't felt like it's done. I, it didn't felt to me like it would finish. It's like still going on. Is this really happening and whatnot? Yeah, it it has that euphoria, especially when you're involved. You don't want it to end because you know it's um for for people who are really in it to see to see a dream come true. You know, you're not gonna want to see that dream end. Hmm. Okay. Cool. I mean, I I do understand like. Once it's finished, once you develop the film or my site and yep. give it to the boss, it's like, wow, that that did happen. Like, wow. yeah, that's the feeling. So then, mm-hmm. could you tell me about Friendship Express? What's it all about, and why does it have um, a very Appleish style? Okay, um, I should start with uh, the convention. It's basically Malaysia's first My Little Pony convention. We've been I've been trying for one for here for quite a long time. Um, of course, uh, I would dare say that previously, when I've been attempting for it, I understand that you know I'm not the uh, smartest kid in town. I'm I'm, not, I'm far from that even now. But back then, uh, I was pretty naive in a sense that you know I did not know what went into a convention. But you know I wasn't willing to go head first, but I was willing to learn. And um, these kind of things, you only really learn them when you're really working on the field. I mean that's what they tell you at university, and uh, it's pretty much the same in real life. You really learn when you do these things. So when I when I went to, when I started organizing Cantalot University with my friends in Singapore, I realized that oh, um, as an event down there, uh, this is how they did it. And one of the key factors that I have is saying that okay, when it comes to an event, always ask why did it work instead of what made it work. And after gathering all that, the Friendship Express is like um, a kind of distillation of the. The, the the flaws the the mistakes and whatever we felt could have been improved in the previous conventions that I've done and it's going to be a a pretty big concept convention it is the f- one of the first type of the conventions that is actually free and open to the public just like Clausdale Splash but Clausdale Splash was more of an art festival a friendship express is like a pony con that is Open to non-bronies as well. You can walk in and enjoy the show, enjoy the concert. You can join the panels. And, you know, while we'll be talking about drawing ponies, the, the knowledge is relevant to any artist out there who wants to draw. You know, if they want to draw, let's just say they want to know how they should start or what software to use. And artists can give relevant information regardless of whether people who are interested in drawing ponies or not. So we are looking to have an event that is not just for bronies. It's like a pony convention for all, if you get what I mean. All right, all right. Sounds uh, sounds like a good way for someone to get into the fandom that just wants to learn to draw, like uh, me, for example. Oh, cool! Uh, it, it, sounds it's... a great place. I'd love to go. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome! We would love to see you there if you can make it. <laughs> we well, have... that's well, a different yeah. story altogether, isn't it? Really. <laughs> it's also partially to show off the fandom. Actually, like um, there's so many things in the fandom that are beautiful. It's still quite intriguing when you look at. My Little Pony and the fandom that comes with it and you're surprised when you see things like um, the Bronies for Good the Brony Thank You project um, other things like Legends of Equestria and many many other projects and you you look at it and you think sit down and think for a while these guys just had one thing in common they just watched the same TV show true, and yet true. these beautiful amazing projects just come out of it so what we are doing at Friendship Express, one of our um, key events, which is about to be released in our agenda, which is coming soon, 
is that we're going to be highlighting and showcasing a lot of these fan creations. Uh, music, we're going to be showcasing some games, we're going to be showing off a lot of art. Art is a very, very key uh, element of the fandom, especially here in Southeast Asia. A lot of good brony artists, just a lot of them have not been given the limelight to shine and we, we plan to give them that at Friendship Express. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. And then, don't forget the MBS show, this crazy Natis show that started yeah, off with people... Yeah, from Malaysia. Yeah, and that started off with some people like, hey, I want to do a podcast. Yay, let's do it! And suddenly we got British people on. And Actually, I beg between, to differ. Yeah. It's not really the, hey, I want to do a podcast attitude that got us here. It was... um. <laughs> There are a lot of people who have that attitude. I mean, I have lots and lots of crazy ideas that I never pursued. But um, when it comes to a podcast and things like that, it, the real paradigm shift is saying that, hey, I want to get off my ass and do this. So when you do that, that is, you know, it, it becomes a turning point. To to think of something is the first step. To do it is the other and to keep it up is the next. So there have been other things that have been happening in, the, in in Malaysia. I know that previously other people wanted to plan a pony convention here. So they get the idea, yes. They get a team together, yes. But do they keep up the effort? No, they, they, they let it droop. There are some mm. cases where, you know, we went all the way to keeping it up. Um, in the case of uh, a little known convention called My Little Pony Con last year, which was supposed to be in um, Damansara here in Kuala Lumpur, but failed because of insufficient resources. Mm. The, we reached a different stage, but it, the idea is, you know, in keeping up is really the spirit of not giving up. And it's hard to see that, you know, that there, there are a lot of demotivating factors in the fandom. There are a lot of haters all, all over the place, not just in the fandom, but of course outside the fandom. There is our daily life and our chores taking up our time because, hey, it's a hobby at the end of the day. And basically, there are even people who are just plain discouraging when it comes to these kind of things. And why, like, especially the Asian mindset, why are you wasting time on this? Go study, go do something more important. <laughs> Some crap like that will yeah. come out, you know? Yeah. Okay, so then, yeah? I, I knew you for how many years now? Three, is it? Four. I know you for four years now. And me looking at what you wanted before, like your crazy idea of going to BronyCon. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that idea was nuts in, from the very beginning. Hey, I still want to go to BronyCon. <laughs> oh, same here, man, same here. But no, um, started, start, it started out with BronyCon, and then you wanted to do your own con. Actually, the own con started first. Oh, really? Now. Yeah. But anyway, I, I knew you from that point, and now, looking at where you are now, and <clears throat> how things are going to go through, and you're almost getting there, I am I would say I'm proud to be your friend, and I'm proud of you for making it happen. I'm actually, I have, to, I have to say the same about you, you know, I mean, especially with the podcast idea, I know you wanted to do a podcast for a long time. And um, because uh, I think when we when we met, I, I already started on my own podcast called The Lines Podcast, which was in my university. And I said that, hey, you know, Norman wants to do a podcast, why the hell not? We're in a, we're, it's, it's perfectly doable. And in fact, you know, there's all the resources right at our fingertips, so why not? So he started off on SoundCloud. I'm like, dude, SoundCloud, can we move up? I still remember that story. I still remember that story. One day, randomly, you called me. And I was thinking like, what the hell? And I was playing card games then. <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> okay, I'm going out. Answer the phone. Hello. And you, you're pitching me this idea about, oh, I want to help you build the show and put it on iTunes, blah, 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 and so on. And they're like, oh. Okay, I'll think about it. Right now, I'm not really free. Card game in mind. <laughs> wow. Three years later, I finally found the truth of what happened on that faithful day. <laughs> I did tell you before. I was like, why is Norman sounding like he doesn't really care? He's not interested. I was like, that's not a word. Okay, never mind, Daniel. Be professional. <laughs> no, because I was playing card games and you're... you're like, oh, God. I was so, like, yeah, I've given him the elevator pitch, Daniel. You've done your best. Now we just sit back and wait. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but still, um, from that point on, I started off moving to YouTube because, well, we need to... SoundCloud ran out of space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. SoundCloud was not friendly. SoundCloud was not friendly. But after the SoundCloud thing failed, YouTube happened and you said, hey, why don't you do this and this so we can go on iTunes? And you know what? I have to say that we're... One of the few shows that's currently in the top for the trending. Uh, I, I think it's one for what's hot or something like that. We were in new and noteworthy for a while. Um, so what you're saying is we're hot. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, well, congratulations. Um, I, 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 
I just wanted to uh, point out that Daniel said before. Um, you said that there's the, the, the three steps to getting something done. That's to think yes. it, to do it, and then to keep it up. I, I have to agree with you on that. But as as you get along those three steps, I feel like it gets harder and harder. Not to do, oh, it will. but it will to, get harder. to and keep it up. That's it's, the test. The to thing. think of an idea, people go, I can't think, I can't think. And they go, oh, wait, no, I've got an idea. I'll do it later. No, 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 do it now. Do it now. Do, do, do it, do it. Because it's hard to get onto doing it unless you start it. And then to keep it up is the hardest part, which I, you mentioned Norman doing this podcast. I, I really admire him for keeping this up. And, uh, no, then we've got a British invasion to up and, that's, you know, that's when you know you've made it when the British decide we want it. Years ago, we had a British invasion on our soil. We're doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, this got a, yes, I would like to formally let out, uh, sorry, what was that? Yes, I, I need to go. No apologies for that. <laughs> He's I'm okay, letting stay quiet about the British invasion. <laughs> oh, so it's your plan, eh, the cord? <laughs> Uh, but, uh, no, no, tell me not, tell me not. I am the court, I plan the invasion. <laughs> Kick-Ass is the one that comes and takes over. Yes. But you, Kick-Ass you is the are muscle. absolutely right. It does get harder. Because of one thing that I think you agree, and all of us agree that we fall victim to, procrastination. Oh, true, true. Yeah, we'll sit down and we'll say, I'll do it tomorrow. And this is a big trap because back in my podcasting days, when I had my own podcast, it would be like, I need to take a break for a week because my equipment isn't functional. And then I take that break for one week and I enjoy it. And then next week I'm like, can I take a week break for another week? And like, aha, that's the trap. You got to make sure you don't fall into because you got to. I'm, yeah. I'm one of the very rare people that actually really dislike procrastination because what happens is, is I procrastinate. It's like, oh, I'll do that picture later. I'll do it later. Or I'll do this recording later. Or I'll do whatever later. And then as the time gets on, I'm thinking, what am I doing? I could be doing that thing I said I wanted to do later. And I get angry at myself for not starting it, finishing it, whatever point in time it is. If I don't fit, get it started and finish as quick as possible, I get really angry at myself because what are you doing? You've not got much time left in this world, you know. Just get it done. Don't sit around waiting. And it really annoys me when I do that. But I can see what you mean because a lot of people seem to say, oh, procrastination is my problem. And it's like, well... Don't. No, procrastination is not people's problem. Procrastination is a problem. It happens to everyone. Yeah. The thing is how you deal with it. And like um, one of these ways is one one thing that comes back to Friendship Express about how I dealt with the with the eventual procrastination that would have hit me is that I actually said we're doing Friendship Express right go on to get on to GoDaddy FriendshipExpress.org bought the domain yeah we're doing this it's locked it's sealed in it's happening and then you know. I explain this to a lot of friends, like, organizing a convention is like launching a rocket into outer space. So, if you start a convention, you tell the world a convention is happening, you've lit that fuse, you better hop on and get ready to ride. You know, you're not, it, it's going to happen. Yeah, and also with that, like, also announcing it and whatnot, you've announced on EQD, and also you announce it on the PonyCon app. So, yeah, yeah it's happening. And, you know, Talking about conventions and announcing stuff, mm -hmm. uh, I remember one episode where I talk about the things that you're trying to do was a fundraiser to raise about a thousand dollars, was it? Oh uh, yes, um, for Friendship Express, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Yes, and we yeah. That continue. was that was to get Vincent Tong. Yep, Vincent Tong, otherwise known as the Waifu Thief. <laughs> I mean, uh, Flash Flash Century, uh, to get onto our convention. You see. Would be a great pleasure if we could get an actual voice actor to come here, and um, you know, we saw the comments on EQD of people arguing, yeah, you can get a you can get a voice actor, no problem. I'm like, if you're in the United States of America or Canada for that matter, it's really quite easy because you have a lot of um, domestic airlines that handle the routes. Unfortunately, over here in a country that lost three planes in the course of a year, um, it's a little tough. It's not a little; it's much tougher. So it's. Um, I, was gonna, I thought you were going to say something about the cost of getting people over there. But no, planes go down. <laughs> what? Okay, so, okay, fine. Uh, that's, the cost is the so main issue. Turns out I'm not going to come visit you anytime soon. <laughs> My bad. Oh, God. No, 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 no. We don't visit. We agree to meet somewhere. <laughs> oh, God. No, okay. But, yeah. It's true, it's true, Dan. I, I know what you mean because me going to Buck last year was an adventure to itself because I flew Air Emirates to fly to... Uh, the UK, where Buck was, Manchester. Okay. Woo! My hometown. <laughs> <laughs> and going there and knowing how much it costs, is like, okay, wow, that's 
exciting and not including it's, the hotel fee and whatnot. It's completely nuts. And the thing is that <laughs> when you're talking to voice actors, it's really, really difficult because from our experience, I cannot reveal too much because um, it's confidential information, mm-hmm. but um, there are some voice actors who would request a much more heightened itinerary, like some voice actors would request a business class ticket, for example, and mm-hmm. an economy class ticket from, from Vancouver to Kuala Lumpur. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, a direct route does not even exist. Yeah, you know what, Then I, I've been on a situation where me flying from Kuala Lumpur to Dubai on Eco Class was not fun. Was not fun at all. I'm not, not talking about the class, really. I'm like, I've, I'm fine with flying Eco, Eco Class unless it's um, not me the shame Air Asia, but I need some leg room. Yeah, but no, here's, here's another thing also, because when you're inviting somebody to come here and... It's just say, like, I invite King to come on here. I want him to have the greatest time of his life traveling because that layover, <laughs> that layover in wherever, uh, wherever airport is not going to be fun because I've been in a situation where from Manchester, 8 in the morning, I have to go to Dubai. I arrived in Dubai at 3 a.m. 3 a.m., oh boy. Yeah, it's like, oh God, this is crap. I need a shower. Go no, take shower. shower. Oh, got shower. Okay, fine. Yeah. First world country. Go, go take shower. Done. Go back and slept on the plane. Go back to KL and it's like what? Um, 12 or is it 1 p.m.? So it's like, oh God, I'm going back through time. Yeah, it, it will have that feeling. But it depends. For people like me, I'm willing to take, you know, I'm willing to sit in the cargo hold to get to a place. Okay. But like, um, like sorry? Now, no, Norman said that I need to look something up that quick. One second. <laughs> or, no, but still, I, I do understand you, Dan. But he, my, my point is... My, my yeah, point is, you can't expect a guest to do the same. Yeah, because traveling is one thing. Maybe they're used to it. Maybe they're used to traveling from A to B in eco class, business class, whatever it is. But it's the first impression that we're trying to give. Because, Correct. okay... But it's actually the thing about the demands. Of, they, they already have this lined up. We don't have to actually negotiate much with them. The mm-hmm. thing is... When they ask for something, we have to deliver, we negotiate. Even an economy class ticket that brings you to the closest stop of a direct flight, meaning Vancouver, Singapore, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, is already a killer five-figure in ringgit. Mm. And that would easily surpass our convention budget, as in the mm. entire budget, inclusive of venue, inclusive of um, you know electricity, whatever, resources, equipment, facilities – it will easily surpass our entire event budget. So, you know, bringing a VA or a, a personality from the show all the way to Kuala Lumpur, it's basically not feasible at all because, you know, looking at the looking at the money we're already spending on this and adding to that with something that would not just add like, you know, a few thousand to it, will just triple or double the, the cost, the entire budget. It's just, it just wouldn't work out. It's, it's sad because we're in that part of the world that is... Literally, the furthest point on the map from uh, places like New York and uh, Canada, we're pretty much the furthest round around the world. True, true. I mean, I do understand that. And getting someone to a convention, just getting anyone here, just say I get the court here just to visit me for funsies and bring him to Legoland. Yay, Legoland. So Mm -hmm. that is also going to be one difficult task for me to pull it off. And it's extreme, yes. I yeah. it's, it's a matter of, is he willing to come here and how much is he willing to negotiate with me? Yeah, uh, some, some voice actresses and actors are willing to take sacrifices, are willing to help. You know, some of them have a very good heart. Mm. But, um, you know, even, even the bare minimum is already so much for us. Mm. If we would like to keep up with some of these, it would already it would literally just kill us. So that's the thing. The transport is the main killer because in over in the US, conventions like PonyCon and BronyCon, you know, I mean, they have a lot of funding, correct? But mm-hmm. you know, the the amount of money that it would take off their bill is disproportionate compared to our, compared to us because it's just they would pay a fraction of what we would have to cough up. Yeah, it's understandable. It's understandable. It's the same situation where if I was invited to Buck and they have to play, pay for my plane ticket, they would have to think twice just to invite me. And King, you were saying something? You said um, it was like going back in time when you were flying back, yes? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, the average plane goes about 600 miles per hour. You didn't go back in time. You slowed time down, though, when you think about it. 
I think that's really interesting because it's uh, <laughs> 1,037 miles per hour the Earth rotates. Are you sure you stepped into a plane or you stepped into the TARDIS? I that's what, that's what I thought. Cue the Doctor Who theme now. Because um, <laughs> wibbly, it's wibbly wobbly, tiny wimey, wimey, wimey stuff. stuff. Exactly. It's just, because, um, you know, if you were traveling at 600 miles per hour, as the average plane does, it's, uh, that's, that's insane. You didn't go back in time, but you slowed it down. <laughs> Norman, you <laughs> are the Doctor. <laughs> You're the next doctor. I don't know. I'm flying around the earth to make it spin the wrong way. Just (laughs) turn back time. I bet there's there's some people that are really into physics that are going to get in touch with me after this and be like, you're wrong. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. (laughs) Isn't that what Superman did at some point? Oh, God, no. But anywho. (laughs) But anywho. So then, um, on to Vincent Tong. So, how is it? Like, are we finalized yet? Are we going to talk to the man we're to the wife who's stealing himself we're almost there we're just we're more than halfway through the crowdfunding campaign it ends at the, at, on 28th February at midnight so if you all want to donate head on over to Possible look for Friendship Express or there's a short link we'll put in the show notes uh, <laughs> p-o-z-i dot b-e slash t-f-e um, we have some perks they are well okay fine we'll put it this way we don't exactly have a lot to offer Unlike most other conventions, with a lot of guests who are coming, but whatever we have, we would like to we we put up what we, we we could we can offer. So among our perks, we have a fundraising album to be done for this convention as well, which will be titled Final Scratch Pro. I'll get into that later. <laughs> uh, we have other things like um, we, if you are coming and you would like a place to sit, because um, one thing that we know about Malaysian culture is that. If you've ever been to a Singaporean restaurant or a Malaysian restaurant, you see some table with fresh, new little tissue packets on it. Oh, no. It's like, it's not because the restaurant's being courteous. It means somebody's marked their territory. <laughs> Somebody said, I'm sitting here. Get lost. Wow. So, um, one thing that one thing is that we realize that, you know, being on the giving end, sure, everybody likes it. But being on the receiving end can be quite... Um, not to say intimidating, but quite degrading, you know, especially when you come, when somebody who's new to this fandom or even coming from beyond Malaysia, if we have anyone who's willing to do that, will come over and say, oh man, seriously, you guys do this here? This is ridiculous. So we are putting a stop to that. But if somebody would like to have a guaranteed place to sit at the convention, we have a perk called Friendship HD, which allows you to book a place, an actual seat in our, in front of our stage. And we'll give you a nice one far in front. And you that seat is yours for the day. It'll be reserved for you. You've got your name on it. Because, you know, it's a simple thing. You know, people say, hey, that's not a very fancy perk and all that. We understand. We completely understand. It's not a very fancy perk. We even agree with that. But, you know, you'll never know how much these things help. Because You'd be what... surprised. Um, when, when I went to book, um, I, I ended up, like I mentioned last time, I bought a uh, the, the full ticket. Which was um, it went in priorities. The front row was always the highest class ticket, and then the back it was like it's like the economy classes, I suppose. It was like the um, cargo hold. Know, <laughs> yeah, it was like yeah, and then it was like first two rows Celestia ticket, the second two or three rows were like the twenty percent cooler ticket, and then the back there was everyone else. And of course, if the front rows weren't filled up, you could sit there. But uh, you'd be surprised how much of a good perk that is, where especially when. Um, when you're like me, you were reporting. Well, not reporting, but you were noting everything down to make a journal about. And it's just like the closer you are, the better. Uh, oh yes, I mean, I work in the news. I know that definitely front row is always the best. And also, King, when you're injured. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> when you are broken. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. But think of it. I had to walk further to get to the front of the stage. So yeah. <laughs> Fun fact then. Yeah. Um, King fell off a roof and a cracked roof. his ribs. Yep. Crack his ribs and Ow. still went to Buck. That's, that's commitment, man. I Are we know. talking about this again? Really? <laughs> uh, okay. it's, a, it's a wonderful story, my friend. It's a wonderful story. No, I, I'm, I'm really impressed. Yeah, good on you. But you meant to impress. You meant to look at me and go, are you a fool? <laughs> well, obviously. No, 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 no. That's what the general public would think. You stupid or something. I'm like, if you got your butt out of that hospital or, like, or, or wherever you were when you had an issue is just come out to go for a convention that's commitment right there and that's the kind of thing that i would see from you know from people who work with me especially with conventions with the teams that i'm with i have friends who you know make sacrifices they're like we've got oh i've got a wedding dinner tonight no you've got a convention tonight <laughs> you know you have oh, to get the, bring, bring the wedding reception to the convention 
No, because that, that, that's, actually, that's actually happened, and you've got to tell them that, you know, it's, it takes a lot of sacrifice. There's no more coming home to your Payday 2 or Dota 2 or, um, you know, you're, 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 you're going to see a layer of, of dust on your PlayStation or your Xbox after a while. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Since I've started my new hobby, I barely... I think the first time I played it was last night when I was streaming it, and that's the first <laughs> time I've played on that in, there in forever. Yeah. And wow. um, on that topic... I'd just like to give a, a quick shout out to two people who listen to the MBS show. And if you're listening now, thank you for getting in touch with me on the Xbox. Uh, I won't see your game attacks here, so uh, every, not everyone will join you, but you two know who you are. Thank you for getting in touch. Anyone else, uh, you know where to find me. Get in touch again. Yay. So heartwarming. <laughs> so it's just a tear. <laughs> so... Don't you mock me. You're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Hey, Norman. So, Dan, so uh, who plays Destiny? Hmm. <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Kick yeah. one, we... chord zero. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Dan, you, you mentioned uh, other crew members, the teammates. So, who who besides you are working with you for the con? Uh, the Friendship Express, uh, what happened is that we are... We are practicing a very fluid team responsibility kind of situation right now where we have um, a core team and an extended team. But the core team is basically, some of you might remember, a member of this show before by the name of Charlie. Mm -hmm. He's helping us organize this. He's um, basically the chief organizer. He's well, Basically, all three of us are basically the chairman of the convention. Uh, I stand as more of a, a, a public representative kind of thing. You know, I'm, I will stand as a face, out. yes. <laughs> And uh, Charlie pulls a lot of the strings, does a lot of work. I mean, both of us are fully full-time workers. And uh, Charlie has a lot of things on his shoulders because he's working in the medical industry. And um, for me, I am in journalism, so I've got a lot of things on my shoulders as well. So wherever we, whenever I'm busy and he's not, and he, he'll pick up the pace whenever, wherever he can. And the third member of our team was a previous guest on the NBS show as well. His name is Meals. He's an, a fantastic musician. He's performed at both Cantalot. He's performed at three conventions, Cantalot University, Cosdale Splash, and PonyCon AU. And because of that, he's actually seen the inner workings of these conventions, how they're organized. But his further observation was like, what is it like to be behind the stage? What is what is going on? Similar to what I did in the organization of the convention, he saw how the, con the concerts are being run. And um, we will be having a concert on the first night of the Friendship Express, that is on the 21st of March, open to public, completely free at SS2 Mall. Anyone can come in, anyone can walk in. We'll be having a few musicians with us. We'll be, we'll be announcing that really, really soon. And uh, yeah, we'll, Meals is in charge of that. He's in charge of making that concert, best concert you're going to see. All right, cool, cool. I, I can't wait. I, I hope to be there and hope to take pictures. Oh, you better be there. <laughs> so, okay, talking about... <laughs> your, talk... your, your, the NBA show panel is right before the concert. <laughs> Okay, so well, if you disappear, we know where to find you. So wait, uh, this is new for me. We're, uh, we're gonna have a panel. Who, who's oh, gonna yeah. be on? Who's gonna be on? Oh, why don't you ooh, tell ooh, me? Ooh, big, 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 big. Well, uh, then yeah, I, got, I got in touch with this brony from down south named Norman Sands, a cool guy. Yeah, I don't know. He seems like a bit of a jerk. What do you mean a bit of a jerk? He's a nice, nice guy to me. I don't know what just happens at the phone. 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 Just happens Malaysian... Have its first panel at the first Malaysian yeah. convention. Yeah. So, um, what's the plan? Because I got no idea. <laughs> well, basically, as I said before, this convention is for the public, for people who come out and want to be like, um, hey, uh, I would like to do something. Or for anybody who walks in and wants to know a bit more about the fandom and why we're all crazy over, you know, pastel color horses that are from Generation 4 because the Generation 1, 2, and 3 were pastel color as well. I realized that argument doesn't work. <laughs> So, basically, it's for people who are curious, and for anyone who seems to be just walking by in the shopping complex, just having a drink and be like, hey, what's these, what are these guys talking about? Why is there so much noise today? I'm like, okay, they walk in and see us, and you, you basically turn around and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, is that, is that, is that Brody cult? Couldn't agree more, King, couldn't agree more. 
What oh kind god, of, I need to wash my hands. Throw that coffee away, you're gonna get infected. <laughs> what kind of what kind of place of worship did I walk into? <laughs> uh, okay, besides oh, that, so yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so then, um, if if I'm not mistaken, the MBS show panel is just going to be you, me, and some of the crew doing the show or doing a live show or doing a Q and A because I got actually, no idea. It's a bit of, actually, it's it's the balls in your field for that because what happened is that um. We like to put it in your hands to decide what you want to do with it because uh, you will want to say it's part of your dream. And, of course, when it's part of a dream, we always have a plan in, our, in, in mind. So this is, it's, your, it's basically your time to shine because um, it's, a, it's a great achievement to be podcasting for three years. Some big podcasts out there on iTunes, you know, not talking about those that launch for two weeks, five episodes and die. But even some of them that have been around for a while don't even last three years. They don't even reach the 150th episode. So this is a big achievement for you guys, and um, we, we would like to celebrate that. You can have a, you can do Q and A, you can do giveaways, and one, but one thing we would like to show off is basically, you see, as I said, coming back to the main point that we're a fandom that grew from just watching the same TV show. <laughs> like how cool is that? From watching the same TV show, everyone on this podcast basically were united because we watched the same TV show. So why not? Why don't we? You know, we would like to celebrate that. You know, this fandom is so diverse that it's not just. Um, you know, it also just dispel you know, the usual rumor that says that we're just um, kids staying in our parents' basement and um, you know not working, unemployed. I mean, the two the two people, two out of three of the main committee of the Friendship Express are fully full time employed workers, and one more of them is a full time student. So. Yeah, we've got stuff to do, but yet we're doing this on top of it. We're not like slogging our whole life out just no, doing true, this. True. I mean, um, the show, the fandom itself, it's an interaction between friends. I mean, yep. there are awesome people in the fandom. That's why. Yeah, I mean, if we think about it, if we really think about it, the way that we gathered here, like, for example, like you, me, then. Obviously, we're local, so the chances of us meeting is quite high. Mm -hmm. But like for Rom, Cord, and even King here, it's the chances of us meeting and doing a forum like this, it's really, really slim. Like, out of a normal everyday con um, conversation, mm -hmm. will we ever talk with each other? Like, that's the thing. I mean, Are we doing that now? Yeah, I know. No, but... no, 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 not at all. Like, let's just say that it's, it's um... weird that the one I've spoken to in person lives the furthest away from me. <laughs> so true. <laughs> it's interesting. Norman here, how... I've spoken to in person. Court here lives a couple of hours by train. I've not even met him yet. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> well, Norm, I, I'm I'm about six hours away from Norman by train. <laughs> yeah, but still, I mean. This is what I. Couple like of times I zoom past him down to that little dot down there. And be like, oh, jerk. oops, sick of work. We you need we need to Looking play out magic. The window, just where is he? <laughs> I see him. <laughs> but oh, I'm I'm that that <laughs> but uh, my point stands. My point is this: we all enjoy the show, even if we don't participate in the fandom itself. But we all enjoy the show. Some of us brave enough to participate in the fandom, get to know other people. So. Like I said, I know King, Cord, Rom, you, Dan, and me with my line of work mm -hmm. as a podcast host, I am attracted to people who have cool stories to tell, like Cord with his obsession with destiny and King with his awesomeness of not giving up. So, obsession oh, with destiny, is that how I'm going to remember that? <laughs> yes, yes, you are. I'm just oh, glad Norman. I'm he's just glad Norman. He's never going to give you up. anything else. He's never going to let you down. Nope. No, no, but he's going to run around and hurt me, though. <laughs> 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 no, but the point is, the point is, I am oh, glad oh. that I started this for three years. It's it's amazing how it just traveled around the world. You know, I thought that okay, this is gonna. When it first came out, you know, I thought that okay, Norman's aiming for Malaysians. Is this gonna be hard? These Malaysians no, don't is... even know how to use their iPod. No, it is hard. It is hard. The only reason why I branched out was because Malaysia didn't offer me or it didn't spoke out to me. It didn't scream, says pick me, pick me. 
Yeah, because what happened is that a, a lot of the talents in Malaysia are relatively disconnected. It's sad because we rely very heavily on Facebook. I rely very heavily on Facebook. That's a bad thing. Mm. You know, I mean, people out there, a lot of us still rely on interpersonal communication, talking to one another, which is why when a lot of Americans and British people start telling us, hey, you know, online interactions don't count, you know, your Facebooking and your IMs don't count. I'm like, for me personally, most of the people I talk to online are people whom I've met before, and that's where our relationship really starts. Hmm. Where some people I've met once, maybe at a convention, and I give them my card, and then later we'll be like, oh, hey, you remember me? And then we start talking, like, you know, we met, we know each other in person. Yeah, true, true, true. I, I remember some of the things that... Like, even you, I met you in person. Yeah, true. Oh, um, Dan, I, do, I did remember on the Facebooks that you had some kind of volunteer program going on. Yeah, in fact, we have um, Eric Tan, mm -hmm. who's um, who's in who is a volunteer worker and a card game uh, umpire for Comic Fiesta, mm -hmm. who actually volunteered to help us out with that because he he's also somebody who wants to see a pony convention in the region, and um, I said that hey, he he approached me personally and talked to me and said hey, do you need someone to help you handle volunteers? I said yes, we definitely do, because we need people to help us handle. Um, Kids walking in and out, we need people on security, we need people to help us run around and get stuff. It's a lot of work. So he said he would gladly help out and that's why he volunteered to become the head of volunteers. Oh, cool. That, that is cool because... That's uh, a important title. Head of volunteers. <laughs> like that. I'm so generous, Volunteer I lead these well. people. <laughs> I mean, we don't we don't really have these names for our people. It's like if you've read our about uh, uh, the team section on the website, we, just, we don't even we don't even put really much of the chairman and stuff like that because... We observe a team structure with, between uh, Charlie and I where it's um, a fluid team. That's why we, we can say both of us are the chairman because we do what needs to be done. It's not something like this is your this is your part of the convention. You deal with that. And this is my part. You stay away from it. I will handle this. You know, if there's something that needs to be done, we get off our butt and we do it. Mm, all right. All right. So... That's because, you know, both of us are, as we said, full-time working professionals. We unfortunately have quite demanding jobs and um because you know in in the medical field something could happen on the weekend it'd be like oh crap i need to go back to the mm -hmm. clinic or something and for me i'll be um oh, God, you know news. yeah news, news is is like you know especially when a plane suddenly goes missing oh, no <laughs> suddenly call back daniel all right and my boss tell me daniel you should be excited and the plane goes missing there's lots of news to do i'm like dude <laughs> Yay! That's a step too far. <laughs> oh god! No, no. I'm, ser I'm, I'm serious. This actually so happens man. in the news. It's, so it's a bit crazy. Oh, no, so, I always wondered that. Was, 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 when bad things happen, did the, like the, the the chairman of like BBC News and everyone get really excited and go, "Ooh, ooh, disaster! You go there, you go there, you report yes, this. Fact, you go and interview all the people that are mourning the dead people. You go and look <laughs> at the people who need saving but don't actually help them." Dude, you know, I'm, I'm actually I'm serious. Works. That is really true. But so Dan, is there anything that we missed? Like any questions? At all? Yeah, you... Um, you asked me about why the website has a little bit of a tinge ah. to the particular brand. Yeah. And Norman, you've known me for a long time. You know I have beef with this particular brand. Dan. I do know. That's why I was a bit confused. Um, it's actually quite simple. It's actually just a pun. And a, and a very big play on words that... Uh, ever since I've seen the, the train in the show, it's like, what is this called? You know, I, I've tried my best in previous research topics that I've did with my university to try to relate and see why people... I, I researched why people like MLP so much, why people watch MLP so much. And I say that there are elements in the show that resemble that of real-life things. They have currency, they have government, and they have transport. And I look at it and I say, this, that's, that's a fantastic name for a train, the Friendship Express. <laughs> And um, it's a few it's like a newspaper. <laughs> yeah, even like a newspaper. But then I found out one more thing that actually really, really sounds cool is that um, if you notice our booth program, like if you would like to apply for a booth which is now closed, mm -hmm. it's called Friendship Pro. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's we called, have booths that are closed. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Friendship Pro. And if any of you here do use Apple devices, you'll know that things like um, the software that they produce, Final Cut, Logic Studio come in Logic Express and Logic Pro. Final Cut Express and Final Cut Pro. So we have Friendship Express and Friendship Pro. It's just a simple, re it's just a simple reference as that. It's just a pun on that. Yeah, it makes sense, but, you know. It, it's, it's an obscure reference, but one thing I realize is that, you know, it's it's fine. It's, it's pretty simple. It's also quite easy to do the graphics for the site. It's like... 
Why not? Uh, why not? Why not take something that's already done? It's, it's really, it's really quite pretty good. And okay. even though I hate Apple, their marketing is <laughs> actually pretty good. Um, in fact, just to tell you, Shame, has any of you, have any of you seen the trailer for the event? Uh, I mean, okay. Uh, so Norman, have you seen the trailer? Uh, not yet, but I. I'm... <laughs> you got to see the trailer. I'll, I'll I'll send you all a link to put in the uh, show notes. All right. But uh, okay, okay, composure. <laughs> It's it's basically that it's basically just a little pun on right. stuff, and it it, it 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 appeared as fun because um all the other conventions out there, it's it's something that I looked at. It's like we're doing a Friendship Express convention. Why don't we do it about a train? I said that is the most cliche thing I've ever heard. You know, the Friendship Express is a train, and you want to make it a convention about a train. That's really really cliche. Why don't we make it about something totally unexpected? Something that okay. totally just everybody be like, okay, right. what's going on? <laughs> When I first thought about you doing the con, like the way you're doing now, like um, Apple, when, when I first saw it, I was like, why Apple? Like, <laughs> why? I, I, I know that you don't like this brand, but why? It's, I mean, me knowing what I know about you, it's just confusing, but... It's a, it's, it's literally just a play on, uh, play on words. words. It's a play on words and branding, actually. Okay, okay. I mean, like, even if you see our fundraising album, it's called Final Scratch Pro in uh, reference to Final Cut Pro. <laughs> oh, you. Okay, okay. Um, and also because Final Scratch sounds like Octavius, um, but I mean, vinyl. Okay, okay. So, okay, um, then. Sounds like, a, sounds like a RPG video game finishing move. <laughs> It sounds, no, that sounds final like a Scratch Pro a rhythm game. Oh, boy. So, okay. Bring then. it on. I'll use my Final Scratch Pro. Cut out. Oh, God. <laughs> Catwoman, watch out. Whoa. Okay, then. Um, <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's the thing. We we all know that the convention is free, but you, you have booth where you, well, sell swag. And here's another thing I want to know. Is there any table for people to hang around, play games or whatever? Um, this is actually in the works. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to reveal, but um, okay. Let, let's put it this way: we're going to be showcasing um, fan-made games, Ooh. such as LOE, such as Fighting is Magic. We're going to be showcasing these things. So while there's events going on the stage, like panels and things, there will be side events. There will be stuff going on the side, like we'll be showing off the games. We will definitely be involving the collectible card game. We would we will be having a little showcase where people can play using the demo decks that we have. And try out the game for themselves because unfortunately there is no shop that carries the MLP um, collectible card game by Enterplay yet in Malaysia. Yeah. But we would like to give people who are curious a chance to try out the game. I mean, we don't have a contract with Enterplay; we can't bring the cards down. But I know it, it's a it's a shame, really. I mean, even though Enterplay recognizes me as the community liaison for KL, but still they won't. Really? <laughs> yeah, I am the community liaison for KL. I have the oh, cards for cool. pro- I have promo cards to give out during the event. Oh wow, that's cool. That's cool. Give me one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you'll come. You'll get one. Yay! Give so, me. <laughs> I have, I have. Um, even if that's the case, you know, it's funny how there's a community liaison in a country that doesn't have the card game. The best, um, you know, median that we found to this, the best median solution is to just bring a few decks in and let people just play around with it, see what they see, what they think about it, and perhaps, you know, if a following gets a bit bigger, maybe shops might start recognizing it. True, 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 true. But anywho, um, then. Yeah, uh, I think we reach the point where there's no more questions to be asked, unless the rest of the guys have something to ask. No, oh, fire away. I, everything I was going to ask, he pretty much covered. So I'll be trying to be I have a question. Oh, he's answered it. Never mind. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? oh, he's answered it again. Okay, great. Fantastic. Never mind. He's very concise. So very informative and very interesting to hear about. I mean, unfortunately, I won't be able to make it. I would love to, but um. I'm already going to three cons this year, maybe four. That's so. fantastic still. I mean, you're, at least, you know, you're making an effort to go to conventions. Because, to be honest, in this region, I'm not going to name anybody, but, like, you know, there have been people oh, that I've talked to that have even said to my face that, ah, I don't feel like going. Or the worst ones, I don't have money to go. I'm like, oh, really? I know there are some people who actually have the cash. I'm not talking about anyone on the show, but to some of the listeners. You know, I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. name anyone. No I mean, I know Norman didn't make it for the past two, but he had his reasons. But there are some people that I know don't go to conventions and they give really, really lame excuses when I know that they really didn't make an effort for it. Take me by example. You know, do what I did. Go anyway. 
<laughs> True. You know? no, they, True. They'll, make, they'll find the simplest crutch. They'll be like, oh, I didn't feel like going. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Mine, mine was a wow. legitimate reason not to turn up. But I still, I still went. <laughs> Why didn't you All go? Right. I was kind of crippled. <laughs> No, I've got people who said lazy, yeah, I'm lazy. I'm, uh, no, being lazy is a big excuse in, in Malaysia, really. A lot of people yeah. actually say, oh, I'm lazy. No. Why didn't you come for the meetup? Oh, I'm lazy. You know, Why didn't you go for the meetup? I didn't feel like driving on that yeah. day. I'm like, you have a car. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing that I agree with King on his, pre- on his episode, where I could go, or I, I could miss it, but have the thing of, oh, they're having fun. I want to be in that fun. Or go and have fun and, oh, I regret going. My poor body's yeah. aching. What was it when I said? You said it's better to regret that. I'd too. rather regret not doing, I'd rather regret doing something going, oh, God, that was so much fun, but I shouldn't have done it, rather than, oh, yeah. God, I'm, I'm missing out. It's it's a worse yeah. feeling to think you're missing out. I mean, yeah. that's the problem with a lot of people here is that they don't, they don't, they're... <laughs> I've heard a lot of things from um, people. I mean, uh, they say that, oh my God, I wish I could go for this convention. I wish I could go for that. I wish I could go for this and that. And then when people bring a convention closer, so much closer to them, they don't go for it. And the Cantalot University was a prime example because there were very few Malaysians at Cantalot University. There was only, Niels and I, in fact, were the only two Malaysians at Cantalot University, while Mm. There were Filipinos at Cantalot University. There were Indonesians at Cantalot University. And there was even an American in Can- at Cantalot University. It was amazing to see such a diverse level of people there. Then come no to British, Rio, though. Uh... <laughs> Sorry? We're failing. No British, unfortunately. We're not spreading out fast enough. And then Damn come to Cloudsdale the Splash at the, end of the year, <laughs> at the end of the year. We had another Indonesian bunch that came. And... You know, to my shock, a Thai brony came as well oh. from Thailand, from Bangkok, came That's to see nice. the event. And um, in fact, we were so honored for him to be there. In fact, the one who came was none other than um, Pativesh, who is the chairman of Thai Pony Con that is happening one week before the Friendship Express in Bangkok. He's staking out the competition. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's what know, it is. The, the thing is that in Thailand, don't be, don't be, you know, taken back. The Thai brony population is massive. Oh my. It is huge. It's bigger than Malaysia and Singapore combined. It is huge. The only th- reason why we don't really see them is because they communicate in Thai and they watch the Thai dub of the show. Oh, wow. That's the only reason. Mm. Their, their fandom is huge. We're talking four figures. Oh, wow. And oh, wow. in, in oh, IJM Silong like, Palace in Bangkok, um, if I'm not mistaken, according to um, status, of the, status of the Herd, it's um, 14 million. Ooh. Wait. Oh, wait, no, let, me, let me check what? that. It's I, I, actually, okay. When I, I, when I, I said that, that, I was expecting like a couple of th- a couple of tens of thousands, maybe. No, 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 no. It's hit. It's hit. The, it's hit the one million mark. I know. I um. I know it's gone beyond. Um. Hold on. Let me pull that That's up. That's incredible. In fact. It's amazing. Yeah. Is, I, like, I think me and Cord have literally just been blown away because we are on this tiny island where it's like. But then again, it's also an interpolation, so it's not really that accurate. But it has definitely hit the one million mark. Mm. That's still amazing to me because there are. I, I think it's seven point six billion. If I'm getting this right. People in the world, Earth, yep. yeah. And I know, I know, I know. Counting to a million would take a couple of days, but counting <laughs> to a billion would take several years. Yep. So it's a big gap. But my point still stands: of that's a that's a big percentage. I mean, especially for what it is. Um, yeah. For what it, no, I, 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 that makes it sound like it's an illness, but <laughs> it is. Join the herd. Join, join the herd, scrubs. Get on my level. Um, you know, but for what it is and for who the fans are, that's. Amazing to me. Yeah, the, like the fandom I already knew it was big. Long. Well, let's put it like this: it's gotten to the point now where uh, you were there, Norman, last night during mm-hmm. my stream, um, where my sister walked in, and everyone said, "Oh, ask her questions." Like, uh, "How old is she? Is she single?" I was like, "Oh yeah, funny, funny, funny." And then someone came up and went, "Ask her if she'll be a brony," and I went, "Does she even know what one of them is?" Hey, would you be a brony? She went, "I do like ponies." Oh, oh my! You can't see my face, viewers, but my face is a legitimate shock of. What? Shows what they are. That's one thing. To be accepting of it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's got its pros and cons. I mean, we've, 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 the whole fandom has grown to a point. But of course, with every big bandwagon like this, there's always got 
Brony some idiots in the back. And <laughs> yeah, and the thing is that some people have this perception, oh, the Brony fandom is full of idiots who can't control themselves, who talk nonsense all day and troll people online. I'm like, empty cans make the most noise. People who really are like that are really the serious minority who are just clamoring for attention. I, would, I recently um, watched a documentary that's quite old, I think. I think it came out last year. Uh, and it's about who's the voice actor for? I don't know. Off the top of my head, I can't. Yes. And they go around all over America and some other places and talk about the people in the fandom, what it's about. And Is that the, the Brony Tale? Show. I think it's so. The I can't Brony remember. documentary by John Delancey. Oh, the, the Brony, co- yeah, the, the unexpected fandom Is it thingy. John Delancey mm-hmm. doesn't speak in it, though. Is it by John uh, Delancey? Uh, yeah, he, he, he produced it. He produced it. Okay, well. Okay, I, I'm I, really, I, I really sorry. It. It's 9.7 million based on this calculation of the 2014 State of the Hurt report. Still? 9.7 million. Uh, known of an interpolated worldwide um, fandom based on calculations of the fandom in the United States of America. So you're telling me that you're telling me that the population of the world, which is in 7.6 billion, 9 million going on 10 million are bronies. Yes, sir. That's well, probably counting those that have said, I've left the fandom. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mind so, on the wall. It. Well, bear, bear in mind that um, in, if I'm not mistaken, you sir, have just placed is... a fact shotgun to my brain and my brain is now all over the wall, <laughs> blown away. That's insane. Bronycon um, has already hit the 10,000 the, the 10, attendee mark. Wow. Take that, Comic Fiesta. <laughs> Comic Fiesta, I think, hit more. Oh. Much more, um, 50,000, I think. Uh, yeah, as, as give, it time, Norman, yeah. give it time, Norman. Give it time. Give it time. We will be known throughout. Um, oh, just and those are listening now, you are, you are the backbone. You are the ones that should spread our name. Should let <laughs> let people know Mighty Brony Society. That's what MBS <laughs> stands for. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go with that. So, um, anyway, like people, so have you heard the good news of Celestia? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh my God! I'm doing that. Halloween comes. I am saying I am doing that. I'm, I'm like. Yeah, I'm doing it. And that. then you, you have the, the guide to the elements of harmony in your hand, like the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be dressed up all in a suit. With, with a little hat. sun. Don't forget the hat. On your, you got to have a hat, yeah? No. With a little sun on your on your chest bit. <laughs> and just go around with the book saying, have you color, heard the good color, news of bronies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh and freeze color, yeah. Do you have yeah. a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior Cadence? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Hey, hey, I think if, if I'm not mistaken, hey, this, it was... this isn't my color. Is this Shining's? Maybe. Was it? Wasn't it? Um, John three seventeen that said, "God is love." Please <laughs> 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 love. Uh, Twilight. Uh, Twilight. Back onto the Twilight. Oh God. Back onto the the documentary. Really interesting and legitimately made me like I, I watched it and I woke up early before I went to work thought, oh, what's this I'll have a look at this watched it and legitimately spent the day smiling being proud to be a brony uh, mm. so I would recommend watching that I cannot remember the name but what was it called again brony is the unexpected adult fan base of My Little Pony if I'm not mistaken fun fact King, yes fun fact mm. King, if you go watch the credits my name is in there is it I didn't yep. the cre- the, where I watched it they did the credits credits cut off oh um I've got it downloaded, but I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, man. It's, it's a fun watch. It's, a fun it's watch. amazing to see yeah, that you know the the fandom has spread to places that don't even have access to the show. Yeah, like, it's just a brony tale. Yeah, you're right. No, brony tale is the one with um, Ashley Ball. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about. That's oh, the one that, I that wasn't produced by John Delancey, no. No, that's different. That was, that was, was, like, was it like John Delancey? I think I'd recognize that name. John Delancey no, and the, another one, about... the, the unexpected adult fandom of My Little Pony, is John Delancey's documentary, which came out much. Few years ago, in fact. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, part two, part one and part two came out very separately, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, uh, wait, yeah. there was a part two, or was that that one could be Brony Chronicles? Uh, I go Brony Chronicles is the one. Brony I've Chronicles is by is... by Saber Spark by Stephen Carver. There's well, a after lot this, of... Sorry. Yeah. After this, someone please link me this other documentary yeah. because now I watch this a tale a Brony tale. I actually I was legitimately. There's a proud. lot of documentaries. Uh, floating about but still it's a documentary and we're in there so anyway um, back to Dan Dan uh, is there anything that we miss because I hate to leave without covering everything well um, basically just uh, just let's just run through quickly shall we right. uh, the Friendship Express is happening 21st to 22nd March oh yeah mm-hmm. where it is precisely where it is yes um, it's in a relatively unheard of place but the thing is that we have to find the place that we can afford so <laughs> 
Um, some of you may have heard of SS2 Mall. It's in Petaling Jaya. It is a shopping complex tucked away in the back. Unfortunately, no railway access, but it's quite close to an LRT station, Taman Bahagia, which is KJ23. You can head over there using um, a bus. There are transport instructions on our website, thefriendshipexpress.org. Not .com, .org. The .com is apparently a dating site. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, that's right. why we went with .org. <laughs> well, you can find me there. Uh, oh, no. I thought we will find you at Brony Mate. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> Brony Mate? Brony Mate? <laughs> oh, God. Well, you don't know about the Brony dating Google. site? Gonna, you gonna don't know about the Brony dating site? Anyways, no, we, we're not going to promote that. No, okay, no, fine, no. fine, fine, fine. Okay, I'm sorry. So, but, anyway. I do um, now. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so, anyway, um, Dan, so you're going to be there. Charlie's going to be there. Mel Mills is going to be, gonna be there. there. I'm going to be there, and I don't, awesome Brony's going to be there, right? Yes, it's going to be a, it's going to be a very fun thing. I mean, Charlie wants it to be, you know, Charlie kept on saying, nah, Daniel, stop saying it's a convention, it's a big party. I'm like, you know, I agreed to him in the first part and say, let's not call it a convention. Then I realized that a convention is an umbrella term for just a big meeting of people. Yep. You know, it's 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 something that I went with with Klaus Deal Splash. I said, no, Klaus Deal Splash is not a convention, it's an art festival. But then when I realized conventions, I just... Where people of similar interests meet and talk and gather and be merry and have fun and try not to throw chairs at people who don't agree with them, then yeah, it's really a convention. And because we, we if you've read the philosophy of the Friendship Express, it's also because, um, you know, we realize that the community over here could use a bit of rebuilding as well. Because um, I think the essence of what brought us together at MLP is not really even the show. It's not really even um, this liking for this cuteness because there's a lot of cuteness out there. You can go and like be on lolcats all day and you get all the cute in the world. But, you know, it's re- I don't think it's really that that really brought us Did together. Did you compare the fandom to lolcats? <laughs> no, I didn't. I compared cuteness to lolcats. But, yeah. Okay, just, just, just checking that I'm not going to have to find you. <laughs> But it's still something that we, we realize that we are really brought together because the show preaches something that is quite absent from our lives these few days. It's like, we talk about friendship, yeah, we have a lot of online gatherings. Some people consistently play um, online games together. Um, there are friends, like, what we're doing right now, we're, we're in a podcast together. But um, when was the last time you really actually took time to sit down with a friend and say, hey, I really value you for being my friend? You know, I really value the friendship that we have together. And I felt that as a community based on friendship and an event that goes out to the public that says, hey, we're, about, we're called the Friendship Express. That's, that's the reason why we didn't choose to be called like the Malaysian Pony Convention or PonyCon Malaysia or something like that. It's because we didn't want people to see, oh, PonyCon is the pony guys doing something. That's not for me now. I'm not going. But they see Friendship Express, they'll be like, oh, this is interesting. It's an event. It's a community gathering about friendship. But the Bronies know what the Friendship Express is, so it's given. Uh, it, it will basically be a place for people to come forward and be like, hey, oh, so that's what this is all about. All right, cool, well, cool. It's, it's free well, advertisement for I sat DHS. down with my friends and said, I like, I, like, I appreciate you. I appreciate well, you I feel too. really down now. Great. <laughs> okay. And um, just, just on a closing <laughs> note, um, the, the event will run for two days. It starts at 10 in the morning and will end when we feel like it. <laughs> uh, we'll be having a concert on the first night. And they'll be there, SS2 Mall, 10 a.m., on 21st March to 22nd March, we find out all the information you want on our website at thefriendshipexpress.org. If you need any information, reach me at daniel at thefriendshipexpress.org as well. And um, the closing note from us here is that uh, we actually were asked this question about, you know, would it, wouldn't it be a dream to go to BronyCon? Norman just asked me that, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't it be a big dream to go for BronyCon? Wouldn't it be a big dream to go for... Buck or Everfree Northwest or one of those and um, in the Clausdale Splash I said this at the closing speech when we said that yeah we could have easily saved up a lot of money I mean not very easily we could have worked up out of to get and save money to get ourselves on a plane and send us to Buck or send us to um, BronyCon or Everfree Northwest or one of these conventions but why did we not do that why did because we looked at this this way the airfare that take us to BronyCon it would figuratively kill us. <laughs> so because of that, we said, why don't we take what we have, which is already so fantastic, which is, um, why don't we take the money we would have saved and put it towards starting a convention here so that instead of one person going to BronyCon and having the time of his or her life, 
why don't we have an event where a hundred people can come and have the time of their lives instead of that? Because obviously we can't afford to rent a 747. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, if we, if, we can, if we successfully rent it, we can't afford the gas. So <laughs> why not take what we could have done, you know? I, mean, I would have... I could have gladly just kept my mouth shut, gone to BronyCon, had a good time and come back, you know, have a lot of fun for two days and that's about it. But yeah, I get yeah. I get my I get my happiness out of, you know, making dreams come true and yeah. watching other people, you know, come to an event and smile because that's my true payment. We're not doing this any of this for the money, heck. In the faithful words of Purple Tinker, the founder of BronyCon, the two things you gotta have before a convention is loads of money and you gotta be prepared to lose it all. But the thing is I disagree it's with It's the same you. as Vegas. <laughs> Take that down. <laughs> Quick, Johnny, note that down. Right away, boss. <laughs> but we don't agree that we lose the money. We don't lose the money. We use it, and the payment for me personally is to just watch people smile. And the, I'm glad that the core committee of the Friendship Express share the exact same sentiments, is that we just want to see a happy, healthy, beautiful com- community together doing things that they love, doing things we love together. So that's the main basis of the Friendship Express. Yeah, and then I think what you've been trying to say all along was this. You save up all the money that you can and build up the con for the French Express, that's it. And your well, payment I I is... Well, I saved up because we have, we put together... What yeah, we well, so basically you guys collected a bunch of cash and created the con. And your only payment is the joy of happiness, just to bring the joy of happiness to... The public. I wouldn't to... say that's my only happy payment. That is really the main reason I'm doing it. I mean, there are a lot of other things. I mean, it would look impressive on my resume to say, hey, he True. did an invention. And it would also be a, a really nice thing to put in the past that you can hang photos on your wall, which is why the tagline for uh, the album is Memories Last Forever. When you take a picture, you take a selfie or something with a bunch of friends at the convention, you're never going to erase that from the past. Yeah, you can erase that from your phone, but, you, you know, the, the, the feeling will always be there. Mm, the true, memory true. of the convention will always be there. You're like so... a rich pinky pie. <laughs> Sorry? You're like a rich pinky pie. I'm not very <laughs> rich. Happiness to all, but with money. <laughs> no, no, no. If, <laughs> if, I, if wow. I were, if oh I my were God. rich... Right, quick, Norman. Which, roll, write this down. We need a fiction, a shipping fic, between filthy rich and pinky pie. That kid is a really rich kid that likes to make happiness. Let's do it. Isn't that, cheese, sand- isn't that cheese sandwich? Look at his fix-up for Rainbow Dash's party. Look like, don't that. tell me, like, in three days, you can get a... 20 foot balloon the shape of your birthday girl. Uh, anyway, with helium, that would kill you. Like the helium price here is did, nuts. Did, did we not, did we not uh, establish in that episode itself that cheese is very much like a male pinky pie and that he can, he has a lot of pinky's powers. Maybe he has the fourth wall breaking powers. Yeah, Ooh, fourth wall is do what? You're forgetting it's weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I think not said okay. there. I have a question about that. Did anyone watch that episode and see Cheese Sandwich, you pony? Or did anyone just see it and go, oh, look, it's Weird Al? <laughs> no yeah, one saw that as a new character. I, I always saw Weird Al, saw weird Al man. It's just Weird it's Al. Weird I saw Al. that. <laughs> I got spoiled. Uh, Literally, the first line he says is, well, bonus, we've done a good job. I was like, that's Weird Al. I don't care who this pony's called. <laughs> it's Weird Al. That's just what he is. It's yeah, weird exactly. Al. Like, no, I saw him as, I saw him as a cheese sandwich, but I knew it was Weird Al behind. Yeah. I can I tell the know, difference between the two of them, weird but still. Al. It's just Weird Al. It's just Weird Al. Yeah. There is no yeah, cheese sandwich. Weird it's just Weird Al. Okay, so... It's anyway. not like the point where it's like, it's Nicolas Cage. And it's, oh, God. No matter what movie he's in, it's Nicolas Cage. Oh, God. Yeah. So anyway, anyway... Yep. Um, Let's move on to the next topic. And then, thank you for answering all our questions. Thank you for being on. And, and no problem. Well, Sorry for being long-winded, if anything. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, anything's going to be hell. But hey, uh, it's not my job. It's Sweetie Belle's job. It's Sweetie and Belle's now, job. Now, we're, now I'm in the same boat as Sweetie Belle. Like, I'm going, I, I go out and shoot politicians talking crap all day. And then I'll be back like, okay, which is the least the crap new statement they made today. <laughs> True that, true or, that. Or in some cases, they make a statement so crappy that it goes one full round and becomes news. <laughs> anyway. Can um... we please move on before things get out of hand? <laughs> okay, Thank anyway. you. Politics, politics, politics. Yeah, Numbers. Is this well. working? Yes. <laughs> no. So anyway, no. Um... No. <laughs> Move anyway. on swiftly. Yep. Dan, can you join us for news time? Yeah, yeah, sure. Awesome. So anyway, Ro, news time. Oh, wait. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I finally, we're... I can sit here while <laughs> someone else reads the news. Woo! <laughs> he shouts, saying, can we move on? And then he's not ready. <laughs> the recording's been for almost two hours. I totally forgot about news time at this point. Yeah, <laughs> two hours. Two hours. <laughs> anyway. 
And now for a new Sam at the MBS show with your host with the most Romuald, aka Relicious. And in today's news time, AD Keating Rogers joins Brony Thank You Fun Board. Amy Keating Rogers has joined up with the Brony Thank You Fund for their future charity endeavors. The exact announcement below. The Brony Thank You Fund, Incorporated, is pleased to announce to show writer and author Amy Keating Rogers has joined the board of directors of the fund. Miss Rogers steps in for Pixel Kitties, who is stepping down to do, due to increased professional com- commitments. We're sad to see Pixel go, according to fund president James Turner, but if we have to lose her, it's hard to imagine a better replacement than Amy. She has already worked with us on several occasions, and we're delighted to have, join- to have her join us formally. I'm really flattered that the Brony Thank You Fund has asked me to be board member, commented Rogers. I think they do a great work, and I'm excited to join the team. So Amy Keating Rogers joins the Brony Thank You Fund, and that's amazing because if I remember right, the Brony Thank You Fund does a lot of good, and it is amazing for such a wonderful woman to join this project. I, I, it's not just her, but like, and I understand that Pixel has had to step down due to whatever reasons. I mean, there must be reasons, good or bad, whatever. But for all the good that I know he's done, uh, I think it's amazing that anyone would take part in this. Well, not just the people we've named, but everyone that isn't named and everyone who takes part in said charities and things. I think it's uh, astounding. Especially to have like been founded from this fandom, that there is actually a cause out there that where we just do good. Yeah, fa- founded by thing. the fandom for everyone. True that, yeah. true that. Yep. And as I said, it's really amazing that, you know, it just started from a bunch of people just watching the same TV show. It's, it's, that there's not just one, it's not just the Brony Thank You Fund, there's Bronies for Good as well. It's like, you think one charity organization is something. I don't see any other fandom in the world that has spawned two charity organizations. <laughs> the Red and Cross. has members of the show <laughs> crew involved. Mm, true, and it's true. seriously a milestone achievement. Congratulations to the Bernie Thank You Fund. Yep, true that, true that. Congratulations. And congratulations to Amy for joining the team. And hope you do a great job and hope you inspire people. And moving on to the next one, bro. And in next news, comics and show to remain separate canon. In a recent tweet by Big Jim M- Miller, he tweeted that, Rest assured that the comics and show will remain separate. While the comics do power pretty heavily from the show, it looks like we won't see it the other way around, according to FIM director Big Jim. Bobby Kurnow, editor of the IDWM, has clarified that the comics follow the show as closely as possible. They try avoiding breaking any of the show canons. If major elements in a comic idea would clash with a future idea from the show, Hasbro might axe it. He is unaware of the show staffers following the comics in any official way. With all this, what happens in the comic technically has no bearing on the actual show. So in the end, the comic will follow the show canon, but the show doesn't technically follow comic canon. This has been Romeo Aldo with the NBS Show News. Back to you, Norman. Before we um, get into this, I'm, this is new, like completely new to me. I thought that it was uh, not a separate canon, but a side story. And I thought... I, upon hearing this, it was really interesting. I thought it was like, um, so you've got the story, which is the main story, and then you get the comics, which are like side stories. And, I mean, uh, there's a guy on YouTube called uh, Jerry Pete, or Pet, Pete, P-E-E-T, that does a good video on it. And I think it's Pete. interesting yeah. that they are completely separate. I didn't know that. No, I mean, um, me and James and also Silver Quill have been reviewing the show, and one of the few things that we talked about and what we always mentioned was the comic borrows a lot of materials from the show like certain aspects of the show like from its first debut with uh the return of queen chrysalis that one that one story continues on after the in after the changing invasion but there's no time period set all we know is that a cantaloupe wedding episode happened and we got no idea how long in between the, the team rocketed. Time. Yeah. Here's, team. A, here's a big hint. Does Twilight have wings? <laughs> no, not yet. It didn't happen before season three. <laughs> so <laughs> we got no idea when, but... That's actually, that's actually a very smart way to look at it. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. And in that time, in between that time gap, we can just imagine where things happen. And the comic has a lot of liberty to their stories. Like, there's one episode, or there's one comic, the Rarity comic, Um, I forgot, the Rarity Micro, is about Rarity going to a 
day spa kind of thing and getting pampered yet at the same time getting a lot of things happen to her and her knowing the whole process of how things were made and she goes into the business side of things of how to market stuff. So, I mean, you have those kind of comics and also in a recent one where you have the whole main six go to a Western... Don't spoil it, damn it, no! <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so I see your reading, I see your reading. But no, um, in, in the end, the comic has its own things yet it is restricted to what they have to follow. So if if the show has something to do with, oh, uh, UFO ponies do exist, the comic can't push it out early. They have to wait for the show to do it first. Then they can follow through or something like that. Or something strange as humans in Equestria or something like that. Yeah, that's... um, I was As I mentioned before with the uh, the Jerry... Jerry Pete, which uh, maybe we could leave a link in the uh, description below. Um, there's a very interesting video on it uh, about the canon and the non-canon. And he says there is a simple list. It goes to show that's the canon. <laughs> below that is the is the comics, which, I, like I said, I thought were side stories, but now apparently separate canon. Uh, okay. Still makes sense. And then below that is the toys. Anything that Hasbro releases as toys is the next canon, like whatever it is. Then the fandom. Anything you guys make, that's at the bottom. <laughs> when all those three things go away, then it's yours. But until then, just follow that list. True that. The true toys, that. I don't I don't think you can really follow the toys for anything canon because although the show back in Generation One was made to sell the toys, the toys have nothing to do with it in Generation Four anymore. No, well, it does, it does. Okay, no, 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 of course no, 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 doesn't no, no, have that, pink that hair, does she? Happen. I do not want this Princess Skylar girl to start popping. No, no, okay, okay. Um, Court, I have a good example for you. I have a good example for you. Do you remember... Uh, Dan, how far are you in Season 4? What, the, the watching the show? Yeah. I finished Season 4. I just right, haven't watched cool. Rainbow Rocks. Alright, cool. So anyway, um, do you remember in Testing, Testing, 1, 2, 3? Uh-huh. Where um, Twilight almost got slammed into a copter because she was not paying attention and Rainbow Dash saved her? Yep. Oh, yeah. That, that, that toy that exists. A ruffle became a toy, yes. Yeah. Sure, toy is. existed before sure the show. Serious, serious. Ever. His yeah. toy, go buy toy. On the yeah. episode. And remember the train, the oh, Friendship Express. Man. Yeah. How wouldn't I remember the train? <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess. I like the, trains. The first, that's actually the, the first yeah. thing you see in the season two intro after that, when when, when uh, Twilight lands in Ponyville after she the gets balloon, the balloon. You, that's yeah. a whole toy. The balloon is also a toy, but the balloon lights up and like, you know, yeah. I don't know well, what magic they use to fuel their stuff. <laughs> uh, I guess magic. what I mean is, in Generation 1, the show was actually made to sell the toys. Mm-hmm, in Generation mm-hmm. 4, it's been it's been going since before that, and the toys actually, are still part of it, you, but they're the, not made the to buy them. The toys actually started back in 1982 already, when it first yeah. started. That's the whole reason MLP exists, was to help to sell the toy, but it's only yeah, in, Generation I mean, in Generation 4 one. that it started to actually surpass that. Mm-hmm. And and the thing is, the thing is with the toys itself, like any starting car- to inspire the toys. In fact, yeah, any cartoon yeah. show that's available now is to sell a product because, as we all know, making a cartoon show and posting out on the TVs is not cheap because they don't get back the revenue except Less for suck. yeah, except for cable TVs because like you have Discovery Channel who get back their investment via subscriptions. subscriptions. And once those things are out, companies buy the rights to publish onto the TVs. That's how they get the cash. But the main point is, every show that's out there, especially with any Japanese trading card games or four-wheel drive, mini racing What, Tamiya has? The Tamiya racing cars have a show? They had a show before. They had a show. So those things are to sell products. That Those we all know. Now, every Advertising is a bit different, and also with Transformers, the movies, is to sell toys. The point of the matter is, no matter what canon we are in, is to sell a product. E- even with the comics now, um, even if it's separate canon from the show, if it's not, it's to sell the comic itself. Alright, but, uh, and even in the sense that you've, when you mentioned this, as I said, that now it's starting to turn the other way around when the sh- when the toys are almost becoming inspired by the show and is overtaken. Because I'm sure you all know when um, Twilight opened the set chest at the end of the uh, season four when they suddenly all got their rainbow fight powers was um, 
quite soon after that, if I'm not mistaken, Pixel Kitties already took it upon herself to go to the, the, the metal shop and get those keys done. Yep, yep, yep. So the, I mean, if not within the fandom, some other things outside, people start to get really inspired by some things on the show and start making them. And look at the plushie market. Look at the plushie market. It's nuts. How fast did a Coco Pomel plushie come out? I think it's really interesting when the episode comes out or comic comes out. uh, The fandom, three hours, two hours, one hour later, they are instantly making content. I mean, I saw, um, let's put it this. I was watching um, the episode's where all the keys get put into the, the final episode, where they put all the keys into the box, season yep. four, the final episode. And uh, upon seeing them all put the keys in, and it's like, give me that keys, bone rush, and they throw it at the... The moment I saw the keys, I was like, huh. Put to different window, open up Psy, start sketching <laughs> the keys, start giving the MLP. Like, I drew the element, uh, the tree of harmony in the background, the, the change, like, uh, not changeling. They look like changelings, but they were heartless. From uh, Kingdom Hearts, and uh, immediately they were all in battle poses, ready for fights. They all had the key blades, but the, you know the keys were bigger. <laughs> and then the, the end of the episode came. I was like, "Okay, put, put that project aside. Start sketching a battle scene. Uh, 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 let's see. I'm gonna have a Twilight doing a Kamehameha." And I was just like, "This is me," and I, you know, I don't do very well. And there's people that like, are like, "Oh, that's an idea." Picture finished out before the episode is done. It's like it's not just you. What? In fact, the biggest. Thing that we've seen, in fact, the one that really actually exposed that the fandom actually behaved this way to the world was after the episode where one episode one bad apple. There were mm. over oh, yeah. twenty remixes within twelve hours <laughs> yeah. of the episode. Over yeah, twenty remixes on SoundCloud. That's what I, mean. I think it's amazing that people that are talented and then like me who aren't so talented that suddenly go, "Oh, idea done," but the episode not even finished plushies. yet. You know, and then come the plushies like. Within the ending of um, Rarity Takes Man- Manhattan, Coco Pomel plushies were already up. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Because I mean, everybody likes Coco Pomel. She's just so freaking cute. And, like, yeah. And uh, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I mean, like King said, show canon, comic canon, toy canon, and then your canon. Then your shipping canon. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you put it as, that last. <laughs> Doesn't matter if who you ship. I don't care if Flash Century and Twilight is actually a thing. It's last. <laughs> it comes last. Remember that, people. And doesn't matter how great it is, how fantastic it is. It's not canon on for until the show ends. Like I said in my episode, until the show ends, then go mental, then do what you want. And then yeah, we have this, no choice this, but to this listen. True. I mean, but but the fact of the matter is, uh, we the fans know what we like. I personally love Funko's uh, vinyl figure of. The ponies. I have almost all of them except for Celestia and Luna. Now those are fantastic. The ones that are those little bobby head creepy ones. You mean... the, the Funko mini minis or what do you call those? those who, to those who you mean this one, who, Dan? To those who are listening to the show, I'm sorry. he's currently reaching over, grabbing the box. And if you could just show us the box, I'm going to describe it to him. It's the derpy with uh, that's. Like, I'm going to just say this now, assuming direct control. Looking at that. Uh, What's that derpy? You want me to burn things? Yes, of course. That is actually really, really creepy, but adorable at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> I don't like those creepy ones. Are adorable, a bit creepy. The same thing. <laughs> yeah, I love them. I love them, to be honest. I mean, I... the only one that I've actually got <laughs> for drop down is that. Yeah, I just fell off I'll back into my chair. There I've got Doctor Who. Oh, it's oh you British! Standard... You British! Final one. Yeah, yeah, the, the, but the, the thing is, figures. the thing is, he's got to keep him out there. Not on the other side. So when it's like one. disease! <laughs> uh, they improved the QE marks after, um, Octavia and Vinyl, if I remember right. But no, yeah, they improve. But no, what I'm trying to say is, I have all of them, except for Celestia and Luna. And now knowing that Cadence, Spike, and Shining Armor is going to come out, I, I, I'm, no, my budget, where is going? Like, Toys official. No, I'm it's support- not where it's going. You know exactly where it's going. It's going into those five new toys. I know. And yeah. the, thing, the thing is, I'm supporting the show or supporting Revenue. Hasbro. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, as long as we, the fans, support Hasbro by buying their toys, they will kind of close a blind eye one side as long as we keep giving them cash. Gosh. Yes. As long as we keep giving them the Mana or the zenies or whatever you want to call it. Manis. As long, Shekels, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The as, long, as long as we keep giving it, as long as we buy the comics, they will be appreciative of us. 
until mm. we start taking over. Then they will kill us all. Uh, no, 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 they won't kill us all. They start killing those that cross the line first. We're like we're like the change things. We finally we finally come up in an uprising and then they have to put us down. <laughs> like, we come in, we come in, peace. Okay, that will happen. That will happen. That will happen. They'll say, right, the show's over. Everything's over. No more making stuff. Uh, there'll be uh, season assists everywhere. And then some of you are like, no, we shall revolt. And they'll go, Pff, no, Pff, dead. We will be smited down like ants from God. You can't make our stuff anymore, but you've stopped the show. Let us make our own cannon. No. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in a pretty strategic part of the world, the furthest point from Vancouver. So, like, you know, take them a while to reach if they can swim. Set you know? base. <laughs> so within this call, up, basically, it goes, Roll, Cord, me, Norman, and Dan that are all just going to sort of disappear when we realize we're still making MLP content. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> underground, like... People won't oh, know where to hang out. Halfway through a podcast. We'll be the underground radio. What the uh, MBS show, which is, uh, I don't know, major brony underground support system. <laughs> oh. Today we're going to play, we're going to play the remix that uh, everyone loves. Yeah, that Discord like song. Metro 20, I mean, sorry, yeah. French Express 2033. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> 2033, yeah. But anyway, um, <laughs> I think we've gone insane now and news is done. So, Moving on to the final agenda that I have, and it's not on the show notes, is we're turning three. Yeah! The MBS show is turning three, and you guys here, present, and also the listeners at home, I want to say a huge thank you for all the support that you've given me for all these three years. I don't know how to say the things like, I am very appreciative of your support. You coming here just joining me and we saying, didn't go nowhere we on skype uh, I, I know <laughs> I have to say to you Norman I have Pardon? to say to you Norman and to everyone who hosts the show and I think I speak on behalf of every listener listening right now and everyone in this chat when I say Norman thank you for three years of making this podcast there wouldn't be a podcast without you there's no, like you know it's all well and good saying thank you for listening but there'd be nothing to listen to without you making it so for the three years of support you of making this with the help of support and by yourself and sweetie bots and everyone i just want to say thank you for for letting us be here and letting us listen to what you're making and and everything i mean the news the topics the laughs i believe we've had fair few of them just this episode alone True. I, I i think i speak on behalf of everyone and i i urge all the listeners to get in touch with norman and thank him and thank everyone uh we love you, Norman. Thank you. Woo! Oh, we God, love no. you, Norman. Happy birthday <laughs> hey, to yeah, you. Hey, it's not my birthday. It's the show's <laughs> birthday. I'm talking to the podcast. Yeah. Don't get so self-righteous. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we celebrate with stupid hats and plastic plates. <laughs> celebrate you made it for another trip around the sun. Anyway. Uh, boy. But, uh, well, baby crying. Uh, that's going to get picked up, isn't it? Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> but um, it's, it's an achievement. It's a hell of an achievement. Like I said earlier, in, in most things, it's um, get it. It's you know, getting the idea, getting it done, and keeping it up. There are some things you don't really need to keep up. Like once a convention is over and you've done your post, whatever, and all that, you can close the shop right there. But this show has been ongoing for three years. There was there it wasn't like a master plan of let's do twenty episodes and let's call it a night. But you know, one hundred and fifty-eight episodes later, it's amazing we're still here. Well, technically, it's one hundred and fifty-four. Four, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. I failed math. That's why I'm stuck in this third world country. But like, um, it was it third world or fifth world? I can't remember. It's this is where you found out he's actually in the first world, but can't count to one. He's mixing up with three. No, I'm not giving you yes. fine. Ah. I can count to three. I'm not that bad. Can you do I it for can't. us? We need proof. <laughs> one, um, gee, man. Did you, hear the, did you hear the um? Even if he's joking, he legitimately said um. Oh, so. man, I can't remember. I'm sorry. It's, it's not coming to me at the moment, man. But, but, but somehow Norman like here can count all the way to 154. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, thing is, Norman has, this, Norman has always had this obsessive uh, thing about really every single week without fail, he would be doing an episode. And Norman has had a pretty good Saturday night schedule that always has it very committed. Well... The thing is, when uh, when I joined the show, I was in university, and I had a hectic schedule of class, not on Saturday nights, but 
on the weekends I would have things on, and the reason why I left the show is because I started working and I had to work Saturdays and on some occasions I have a choir that I sing in as well that rehearses on Saturday night, so I could no longer make it for this time slot. But the thing is, Norman always made a Saturday free, and there will be times that I'll really, really try to join. There have been times when I've been out of town. I have even joined this podcast from a car. Oh, yep. I remember that one. Yeah, that was in February wow. last year. In fact, I actually, uh, no, it was two years ago, I think. I was in, a, in in the car, engine on, iPad hooked up to the cigarette lighter socket for charging. And I'll be like, yeah, and it's like, hold on a sec, guys. I need to go and reload the internet on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's one day, dedication, one day we'll, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be back on the show and it's like, uh, it's okay, where are you right now? I'm up a ladder on top of a building. <laughs> How are you on the thing? Phone. Fun fact, guys, fun fact. I remember two years ago when I was attending a convention called Comic Fiesta. And I think that was the year that you cosplayed, right, Dan? I cosplayed twice. Yeah, two years ago. was like Last year, last year I didn't, so two years ago. Yeah. So um, I, I remember doing that and I cheated a bit. I, I couldn't make it to that episode because I was, how would I put this? I was away and I couldn't record. And the thing that I did was, uh, for that episode, I put up the Annelie Heat. Annelie Heat interview, yeah. Yeah, and that was for the Extra Life gaming conven- um, gaming marathon that I did. Mm-hmm. And that was a good. That, that was a good move still. You know, you kept the flow going. Yeah, yeah. And also, um, when I was at Buck, I, I arrived a few days early and posting the episode. I still had to post the episodes. <laughs> so I posted the episode on Tuesday. Because even um, when I was doing my own podcast, I used to try to really maintain it. And before I knew it, the MBS show surpassed my own podcast, which started about two, three months before the MBS show. Mm-hmm. It suddenly had more episodes than me because I couldn't keep up on some weeks. I was out of town and unable to join. So what happens is unable to host my own podcast because it was a solo thing. And uh, suddenly I realized, you know, the level of commitment Norman put into this was insane. It was crazy good. It was it was something that, you know, come what may, the MPS show has to happen Saturday night and come out on Tuesday. True that. Even for me, even if I can't record on Saturday, Saturday night or Saturday afternoon for the rest of the world... Uh, I do try my best, and that Tuesday, that Tuesday posting schedule that I put up on myself is how do I put this? Um, every Tuesday there should be an MBS show episode, no matter how late it's getting posted. There must be an episode, and with the hectic schedule of a comic review, that's on Thursday. There must be a comic review on Thursday, <laughs> <laughs> must. So yeah, Sweetie Bot has whipped me into shape. Oh boy. Well, I, and, I for one, I'm going to recite what I said. Congratulations on this many episodes. Thank you, my friend. Thank and I've got to say, we've got to make a huge shout out to two people here. Is basically Dominic Mazzoni and Roger Dannenberg. Now, I'm sure none of you know who these two people are, mm-hmm. but we owe them a lot for the success of this show. Oh, how so? To the two people who founded Audacity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so true. So true. So true. Oh, what gentlemen they are. <laughs> yep. And for viewers out there who are listening to the previous episode and wonder how the bump in quality happened, uh, there's two factors to this. Um, starting after the interview with Sketchy Sounds, he told me that show sound quality sounds like crap. And it... it was, this, was this back when you were still using the MacBook? Yep, yep. Like the MacBook mic. Mm-hmm. I see. And he told me this. It sounded like crap. And I took it to heart and found ways to improve it. And it did. I did improve sound quality for the show. And then my MacBook died. Um, well, I guess we're in the same boat. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. It died during the most effed up moment where I was interviewing... Another heat? No, no, not in the heat, but I was interviewing it wasn't Pony heat, Tim. Just... Pony Tim, okay. Pony Tim. Pony Tim, he's the guy that's... Um, he's one of you, the... right? Yeah, he liaisons for every free of West. Wow. Yeah, Pony Tim. It died there during the interview. Ooh. I think you were there, right? Uh, Jing, yeah, sorry. yeah. I was the one. They, they emailed us. At, they emailed me. I think that's how. I, that's how we got the interview. Yeah, and I was gonna uh, say when you said it, it died at the most effed up moment, I I thought right, either during the interview or during an upload or ed- during or editing during the interview. Yeah, yeah that that was a, It was the worst of the two. Yeah. Yeah. So after that, 
I said that, sorry, Tim, um, I couldn't do anything because laptops died and my current setup was not good at all, like what I have now. And went out the next day to a mall, got my setup, paid a thousand bucks and... The pre set, correct? Yeah, and got it all up and done. This is the setup I got now. And thanks to those two incidents, sound quality for the show has improved a lot. You know, when things screw up, it sometimes can be for the better. Oh yeah, true that, true that. And there's a lot of things involved, like um, getting the show done, getting the news done, getting people in, getting people out. I mean, I am happy to know everyone I've got on the show, from the people we have here now and also the future guests or past guests. I mean... I am thankful for you all. Thank you, King. Thank you, Court. Thank you, Rom. Thank you, Dan, for coming on. Hey, no problem. Without Anytime. pleasure. Without you guys, I am nothing. Without you guys, the show is. On the contrary, nowhere. Norman. On the contrary, because to be honest, it's really you who actually stood up. In some weeks, you know, I know that some weeks you went through, and I mean, you and I went through last time when there were no guests, and I was like, oh man, this is difficult. And these, and you actually pushed through in these times when it was difficult to even continue. You even asked, like, why am I still doing this? We don't have any more guests to talk to. That is actually the spirit that actually keeps the show alive. You know, the guests are a big part, I agree. But you actually persevering in the face when sometimes the guests aren't available, which is when, you know, I, sometimes I get into arguments with people who tell me that, you know, I, I need my phone to, they say, you need, Daniel, you need your phone to live. Or they tell me things that, oh, they need their iPad. They can't live without food, their iPad. You drink. Ponies. Sorry? Yeah. You need food, you need drink. Nah, I've got my ponies, it's all good. <laughs> food, yeah, but food. some people tell me about, oh, I need my phone to live, I need my iPad to live. I'm amazing, you know, my phone tells me to do this, my phone tells me to do that. I'm like, yeah, take your phone away for a day, let's see how amazing you are. Yeah. You know, so, so, so uh, like he says, Norman, if you weren't here, you are you are the, the centerpiece of this. Until I take over. It's <laughs> not so much being here, it's being here and Plan doing this coup. episode, even in the in the face of no guests. Which can be really boring. When like Norman hosts his own solo episodes, I feel bad that I'm not there. The trouble is I can't. But like you know, when he hosts his own solo episodes, I mean, now this week is the Chinese New Year holidays. That's why I have the weekend off. Oh, that's good. Oh, is it? I... Wow. Sorry, I didn't know that. I'm learning so much. A happy Chinese New Year to all of you as well. Okay. Oh, yeah, happy wait, Chinese which year is it? Year is it year the Ram. Horse? The year of the Ram. The, the, the horse year just ended. Yeah, twenty oh, okay. years gone. Well, right, no, it's, it's actually my year now. Oh, cool. <laughs> If so, your age is a multiple of 12 when you, in the year, then you would, it would be your year in the Chinese zodiac calendar. <laughs> Yay. So, a- anyway, anyway, um, thanks a lot to you guys. I mean, listeners, supporters, people I know. I, I don't know what to say anymore because doing this show has taken a lot of my time and I am really, I, I am really appreciative of you guys who don't really need to come here but want to. And I thank you for that. Hey, no worries. Because, well, the the lovely thing about the fandom, a lot of things are done as a labor of love. And when people tell me, Daniel, you got to work for money, I'm like, no, get lost. There are a lot of things I would do that are, aren't for money. People are, my, my parents get mad at me when they say, Daniel, you should stop doing things for free. You should stop organizing conventions for free. I'm like, I don't believe that money should be a motivating factor in life. And uh, it's a very big, um, what do you call it? Thing, thing with me, I don't like to have my life centered around money. And I believe it's the same for Norman as well, because Norman's not in this for the money. Norman's in this because he really wants to see a lovely podcast come out and, you know, stand for it. And that's amazing because, you know, you're not being paid. In fact, Norman pays for this. He just said he forked out a thousand ringgit to buy a pre mic set up for his house. That That's no joke. That's really a sign of commitment. If you're in it, for it's, it's proof. It's just living proof that you don't have to do everything for Dosh. Bring in the I mean, the Friendship Express team, we are forking out a lot of money on the table. We know we're not going to see again. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, anyway, um, once again, on a final note, thank you so much, everyone. From people who are here, uh, listeners at home, listening to this on their iPods, iPads, or on your YouTubes, and even the... Your Xbox um, One, your PlayStation 4. Your... <laughs> yeah, probably. I got Anything no that has audio input and output. Thank you yeah. for listening. Your thank iPod you Shuffle. Listening. I don't know how you get it on there, but still can. <laughs> yeah, th- thank anything you so much. Anything with an internet iTunes. connection. Yeah, anything with, anything with internet Pretty connection. Pretty soon we'll be on your <laughs> microwave, <laughs> entertaining you while you make your dinner. <laughs> thank you, um, Samsung, for making microwaves connected. 
Yeah. Well, I'm serious. You can listen to us on your LG washing machine if you have Really? One yeah, there's an Android washing machine now you can get. Really? Yeah, I'm not Wait kidding. In the future. Oh. <laughs> okay. So you can play Angry my voice is coming out of a washing the, machine. The, the, <laughs> the cleanest my voice ever sounded. <laughs> <laughs> listen to us on your sat nav on the radio. Turn left. <laughs> if you if you really want to send in a thank you note to me or just complain about how I s- don't do a good job, you can do that at the MBS show at gmail.com. And also, fact, if you we really for- want to hear your feedback on this show, so do send us an email and we'll be reading them on the next week. I mean, Norman will be reading them. I'll try to make it if I can. Mm. But on the next episode, in conjunction with the f- with the third anniversary of the MBS show. And uh, from me here, I also operate another side project on my conventions called Crystal Empire Records, which is um, a, a brony record label for Southeast Asian ponies. I'll probably come on to talk about that sometime soon. But there, we are giving away five copies of Overcast Aftermath, which was the official fundraising album for the Klaus Deal Splash. So send us your emails. If there are five emails, five of you are going to get one copy. If there are not enough, well, we'll choose the best five. So send in those. We'll send you a digital download of Overcast Aftermath if you send in an email this week. In fact, I tell you what, we'll throw in as many albums as how many emails you get. How about that? Awesome. Thank you, Dan. Thank, thank you. So I, I, it looks like you guys out there who are listening have some kind of initiative to send in emails. You'll get a free digital um, download album. And that's 19 songs, right? 19 tracks is the biggest Crystal Empire records released since um, Coming True, which was the Cantalot University fundraising album. The fundraising album for the Klaus Deal Splash, being an art festival, would naturally have a lot of music. We have 13 musicians, 13 brony musicians from Southeast Asia involved. You know, it's like a lot of people say, hey, we haven't heard any brony music from Southeast Asia. There are 19 songs on this album that I think some people are yet to hear, so... You want to hear Southeast Asian brony music? No, we're not talking. We're going to play some gongs and some traditional <laughs> instruments. Well, there are some songs that sound like that, but we're not all completely tribal unga 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 music stuff going on here. No, not completely that. Oh, but right. yeah, I'd pay a buck to see that. Oh god, no. But anywho, um, if you if you want to send in your emails, you can send it at show at gmail dot com. Uh, if you got no idea where's that, click on the show notes and it'll be there. And King, you said you got something to announce. Yes, uh, I've started taking in commissions. Um, really? Yeah, uh, if you're interested in getting a commission, primarily get a hold of me on uh, my Demon Dog, which is Kick Ass King, or Try My Tumblr, which is uh, Kick Ass King. I believe Core just threw some money at me. Okay, then I'll be <laughs> um, I- I'm going to get in touch with you. I-, I saw the money. I know you've got it. You ain't got no excuse now. Um, if you want to get a the camera, I'll do it. Uh, t- ten pound uh, would actually get you uh, four characters in a background. Ten quid! Whoa! Okay. Wow! Yeah, that's um, incredible. Uh, someone no, I'm who's sorry, used, uh, who wants... that's a bit too much for me, but yeah, I'll think about it. Well, yeah, you know, um... that's enough to buy me lunch for a week. <laughs> yeah, uh, but so yeah, uh, or get in touch with me. Uh, like I said, I gave a shout out to the two people who added me on Xbox Live. Uh, if you want to add me on Steam, uh, Xbox, Tumblr. Demon Dart, uh, come to my stream. Uh, definitely come to my stream. I love it when people turn up and have a good chat. Uh, and as of today, actually, I've just finished editing a speed paint, uh, which will be on my YouTube, which is Kick Ass King One. Uh, any any of those, stop by. I believe they'll be in the description of the YouTube video or in the show notes. Stop by, get in touch, and have a conversation because I like talking. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, be sure to put that into the show notes. And, Court, where can they get you, man? Where can they get me? They can get me anywhere they want, <laughs> really. I have they can a Deviant catch you. Up. If they can catch me. <laughs> I have a Deviant Art. I do have an Xbox profile. <laughs> I'll, I'll put all these links in the show notes. I also have a YouTube and a Tumblr, which I never use. <laughs> oh. All right, all right, all right. And, Ro, what about you, man? You can find me at relicious.demonart.com, my Twitter, relicious underscore art, or my Facebook, facebook.com slash relicious. Did I miss anything? Let's see. I got for affinity. I got ink bunny. I got, uh, I'm everywhere pretty much these days. <laughs> <laughs> and then what about you? Oh, okay. I have Xbox Live and PSN, although I don't, I own neither of those consoles. 
it's a bit weird. Then. But it's fine. You, you can add me on Steam at uh, Saint Pinky, S T P I N K I E. That's also my Twitter handle, my DeviantArt handle, my Facebook, my basically almost my general identity on the internet. Um, you can reach me at daniel at the mbsshow.com and you can find out everything you need to know about the Friendship Express at thefriendshipexpress.org. That's .org, friendshipexpress.org, not .com, .org. Remember All that. Right. All right. <laughs> and talking about Twitters, um, you can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. Uh, Sudibot will tweet about stuff um, generally retweeting about how three years she suffers and we haven't paid her much so yeah and I, nobody I, gets paid on the show I know but she thinks she's getting paid so yeah. we do this for glory of Norman <laughs> uh, <laughs> god no but, but, but our no, supreme talk, leader oh god no talking about me uh, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo I tweet about toys, food and whatever tickles my fancy and recently I took a selfie with pictures of myself wearing glasses I got no idea why I did that wait you're wearing glasses now? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Post our selfie from Bog. Post our selfie from Bog. I'm actually, from I'm actually going for LASIK soon, so yeah. Oh, well. So you're going to have laser eyes, man? Uh, no, they're going to get my eyes laser. That's a different uh. story. <laughs> <laughs> you, okay. You'll enjoy it, man. I'll have my eyes laser. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> I've already heard the horror stories, but I need to get these eyes corrected. And they're already so bad that, you know, they need something right. drastic Seriously, to say. Seriously, them. man. The... The thing, you heard the stories, but there's such a low percentage. I mean, I've had my eyes lasered for a year now, and I still have perfect vision. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not so much the that is like the, the the process of the operation. Like other operations, you can just close your eyes and imagine <laughs> that you're in Equestria or somewhere. This one, it's like yeah, don't you can't close your eyes. Close your, eyes. <laughs> your eyes are forced open. You can't even blink. <sighs> well, yeah, <laughs> not gonna say it's not not weird, but. You'll get you you love it when you do it. Yeah, my sister had it and she's loving it. Uh, I was told that also it might affect my job because it decreases your short your short sight your long sightedness. Uh, it, 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 no, it makes you slightly uh, long sighted that you uh, will have difficulty operating a DSLR camera. No, because it does affect my job because I use cameras with viewfinders. Just I just pray that I don't like lose being the job. blind. I'll stay blind. I've had <laughs> no problem with um cameras and mm. using any sort of camera with my hope for the best man hope for the best my surgery mm-hmm. all right anyway. wait, wait you, you all went for lasik right particularly not in those, any of those other fancy uh, other surgeries uh, I, no, I went for the most expensive one which is mm. lasek is it i think it's either lasik or lasek i'm not sure which could be the same but anywho also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. You can also catch us live on Ponyville. Sorry, you can also catch us on Ponyville Live. We were com. live. No. Okay, good. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> uh, no, but links will be in the show notes. So yay! Before I go, before I go, starting off the third year, I would like to give out a big thank you for the new art for the MBS show. If you've been following the Twitters, you may have noticed it. And a huge shout out to Puffy Smosh who drew and designed the new characters or the new backgrounds and stuff for the show. Thank you so much for supporting us and doing the great art. Thank you so much, Puffy. And the magic. yeah. Yep, the magic. The magic. Yep, yep. So anyway, um, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Daniel St. Pinky Anthony. I am Relicious. I am Cordcatcher. And I'm your favorite Kekas King. Thank you for stopping by. Yep. And here's another 300 more. Oh, sorry, three um, more years. Three yeah. more years. Three more years. Here's another three more years. And you know what? For the 200th episode, maybe I'll do it live. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, we'll see you then. With cameras. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Take us out, Ro. And we'll see yeah. you on the next podcast. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 There's a train coming this morning, and it's a lovely sunny day. The road ahead to Canterlot looks great in every way. Now you may call me a wanderer because I've got nowhere to go.
First question, favourite character? Dan? Dan, you there? I think you broke him with that question. <laughs> oh god, I no. think his internet broke. Oh god, no. Oh god, no! Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> um, First question and he broke! I shall, I shall answer him for him. His favourite pony is the... Is, uh... Flash Sentry there, it's going to be dark. He likes, he likes the Flash. Oh god, no! I think he likes to Flash. To Flash. Very different from Flash Sentry, he's To Flash. It's actually a superhero pony. Im- <laughs> Im- Im- imitating, uh. Sound test? One, uh, two, three. Sound test. One, two, three. Hey. three. Dan, what happened? I don't know my internet. Third world internet. Sorry, guys. Are you just not the iPad? Are you with me in blaming Apple once? <laughs> hey, I, I would I, I'm always blaming Apple. Apple. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I always blame uh, Apple. Let's take it from let's take it from the top. So three, two.